Andrew Gaffigan, the fucking champion of backdoor roast battle. You killed me. You killed me there. I was the first one against you. What was that joke about the hang to? Go ahead and tell it, because I loved it. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, it's a little dick joke. I forget yeah. what it was. It was something I forget about it. surfing and hanging tin, but his dick can't even hang to or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was great. I knew then I had fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because you didn't even want to perform in it. Oh, so I just wanted to host. Like I told Mike when I brought the idea to him. And it wasn't the way, like it was going to go completely different. It was going to be week by week, you know, so you had time to prepare for each other, for each, com- and he started changing stuff. I told him I just wanted to, to host it. I was like, and he's like, oh, well, you can compete and everything too. I was like, no, I don't want to compete. I just want to host, man. That's my... uh I just want to get better at that right now. Like I, I, I'm not interested in, in like riding battles. I don't care about that. Man. It's it's everywhere. I held it up for so long. That's my bad. <laughs> you just fucking push it. Um, but yeah, um, but you killed it. You did a great job. You definitely were the underdog. I think the one did you didn't have to face Cody Bear, did you? No, because he got knocked out by Quentin first round. Yeah, so. that, that should have. Been, that's why Quentin gave him some cash on that win. <laughs> I I was uh, worried about a couple people on the show, but I was definitely worried about Cody. Cody was a sleeper. Like no one knew who. Like he. No, he, dude. He, I I talked to him the week before, and he was giving. He was saying some funny shit, and I was like, oh god, I'm gonna. He's going to come ready. And he was like, I just had him on the other day, and we talked about the whole situation. So uh, you're going to defend your title this this time around? Yes, but uh, it is actually the weekend of my cousin. Uh, he's getting married. So he the wedding, I think, is in Troy. So I'm going to sneak out during the reception and do the <laughs> roast battle and come back. Well, uh, yeah, he's not having it until later. So that should be around the reception time. Yeah, like, Troy's not too far. Joe the Animal lives out there, doesn't he? I thought he, I don't, is he Illinois or Missouri? I don't know. I, I had him on not too long ago. It was, uh, I think he said he's Troy. Yeah, Troy. He always talks about Fairview Heights and, and uh, Donnie B's and stuff like that, which I got to check that out. I, he keeps telling me to check out Donnie B's. I don't know. Uh, have you been to any of Donnie B's stuff? Uh, I did his open mic one time, but he, uh, they're no longer in the building that they were in. Uh, they're doing stuff out of the VFW. Yeah. Uh, so I've went to that one once or twice. It was like. It was all comics, but I mean, it was one of their only one. It was like one of their first ones opening back up. So, yeah, that, uh, I don't mind doing those when it's only comics that you've never performed for before. When it's it's basically a crowd, then like if it's twenty comics that you've never met and has never seen your shit, and especially if well, we're not gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you feel kind of like the man when you walk out of there swinging your dick and shit. <laughs> right, you you want to go in and be the best one there. Yeah. Man, I got beat the other night at the Word Up comedy competition by three points by Marquise Moore. I was so upset. (laughs) Not like upset, because he earned it. Marquise Moore definitely won it, for sure. I'm not saying nothing against that. I was just, like, stoked. And and then, like, I was like, what? I got second place? And then it was like, what? What? I got beat by three points? (laughs) Like, I almost scored perfectly. (laughs) That's like, just be happy that you did that, though. I recorded it, and I let, well, I watched it a couple times. I was like, man, I really did fucking. It was timing was on. I did crowd work the whole nine. Like, did a, I opened up with my one-liner, uh, which is ironic, because I'll do as many as you put in front of me. And they laughed, and somebody said something like, I got a line. I was like, don't start something you can't finish, bro. Oh, what the fuck? Like, You've heard a white girl wasted. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, you know where they learned it from, right? <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, I did the, I mean, we did that competition, uh, the Tim Loss one. I mean. You got like second or third, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't, second, yeah. Second. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, Sledge, yeah. Well, he was getting votes before he even performed, I believe. Yeah, I, uh, he's, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, fucking Mary Jane killed. And we did uh, another show there, um, was it two nights ago? She fucking destroyed again. Yeah. Like, she's, she's just good. Did you, did you perform on that one? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I did 12 minutes. It was weird. I uh, in my first minute, a dude brought me a shot of Patron. Nice. While I was on stage, <laughs> uh, so that was fucking weird. I, I'm gonna put the clip up, but I should have handled it way better. I I could have made it a fucking moment. But, <laughs> but, you could have, but that's just you know that's just 
building your arsenal for next time you know next time like it'll come around if you stay in it long enough someone's gonna buy you a shot you're gonna be like oh, i'm ready for it this time oh, bitch. i looked at, so he was like next to me and i was going up and down trying to pick out something and he had chiclet teeth and i wanted to be like oh i didn't know your, are your teeth old enough to drink yet <laughs> just something but i was like that's too mean for a guy who just bought me a shot but then he tried to fight the wait staff like the whole wait staff oh. and they brought him out yeah, were you at the uh, the uh, the all famous Funny Bone and Bomb show? No, no, I, mean, I was gonna I was go at the out. Competition. <laughs> it it seemed like a great fucking uh, show. After that, though, <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't there for it. Though, in all honesty, I get a little too sensitive over that kind of shit. Yeah, that shit. I mean, I think everyone prank called him. I prank called him. Uh, I, I did my whole, I was like, hey, can I get a trim? And he was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, cool, because I have a lot of pubes. So, <laughs> Oh, I would have had him come out and everything. And I'd be like, I want all of this hill cleared, all of this. I would have had him walk the whole property, all 10 fucking acres out here, survey it, write me up a bid, and be like, oh, I was just fucking with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> just and I would have brought all my family over, all the black side of my family. Oh my, my, my dad, my cousins, my uncles, <laughs> everything while he was doing it. I And then uh, at the end of the phone call, I asked him, I was like, why why would you even do that? And he was like, I just got stage fright. Hey, it, it happens. Uh, <laughs> it, that, yeah, I know when I get nervous, I start yelling slurs. Yeah, yeah racial slurs. Uh, well, there was a, uh, there was, who was it? I was watching some kind of thing about comedians and they were like talking about the first time they did a... Uh, uh, urban room you know all black they were the only white comedian there they got booked they don't know how they got booked but the guy before them was definitely more their style and he came on and was kind of bombing and shit and uh he's like all i could think of was not to say the n-word the whole time and i was worried about it yeah I, um i don't ever worry about saying that word it's not something it's not like uh, even with my black, all my black friends, like, uh, Antonio and, and all of his, all of, we were all real close as kids growing up and uh, his cousins and mine, they would always try to get me to say it. I'm like, nah, uh, uh-uh. uh, my mom will kick my ass. I wasn't even allowed to say wigger back in the day. <laughs> really? Yeah. My mom was like, it's too close, too close. <laughs> <laughs> Good mom though. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She doesn't play that shit. My mom was nuts. Still nuts to this day. Like, she is scary. She's one of the only women my, my woman's scared of. <laughs> like, she's like, I ain't fucking with her. She had the, uh, my wife was having issues. She paid all the marketplace shit with the insurance back in the day, a couple of years ago with the Obamacare. And when some shit switched and they, like, we're trying to say she had to pay all this money, but she had her own health insurance, so she wasn't, like, violating nothing. And the two companies, the marketplace and the insurance companies, wouldn't figure their shit out. And they're about to put, like, a, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, basically a negative mark on her credit, a claim on her credit and everything. She got perfect credit, never had any kind of blemish on it. So she was pissing her off. My mom called him up, and they both called my old lady within 30 minutes with emails and fucking apologies and everything. I was like, what the fuck did you do, Mom? Fuck. Did she just threaten them or something? No, I, I don't know. She's just really... She just knows how to make people's lives a living hell. Like, I don't want to <laughs> deal with this woman. I'm just going to do my job <laughs> for this one. That's fucking crazy. You fucking ripped that one, man. Yeah, I'm a bong rip guy. I was like, it's all I've always been that way since I started smoking when I was like 18. I found a bong and was like, actually, my boy got put on probation and passed me down his bong that his boy had passed down to him when he got put on probation, <laughs> and I broke it. I uh, one of my friends showed up to a party the other day with it was like a double bong, so it got filtered through twice or something. I don't know. Uh, destroyed me. Um. <laughs> I thought everyone else was on like the same wavelength as I was, but they were like, hey, dude, you are. I was like doing like running starts at a dartboard to throw. I was like, you need to settle down. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You're going to give it away, man. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, it was his fucking mom came downstairs. She was plastered. It was so funny. This is 
was like the one I always just sit around and smoke on that one or this one. That <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but it's a little excessive. It takes a lot of pot to fill it up, and it take like two grams. What the fuck? I. But when I get like moon rocks, I'll put a, like a fucking gram of moon rock in there and just like puff on it for a week. <laughs> That's what I like. I'll take like a hit, like an hour or something, but I don't like to be too high. I'll just like smoke a little weed, listen to music and like do homework or something. But like, I can't just fucking sit around and smoke weed. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, that, it, I can't let certain laborers get high during work. Like I don't care if they smoke weed when they're off of work, but when they're on work, they just can't function. They, they try to get high with me. And it's like, so that's something my boss is the one that got me to first start smoking weed back when I was 18 years old. He grew his own shit, shit that's better than anything I've ever been able to grow or find or buy. And he's an old school hippie, got me into smoking heavily, but he wouldn't let me be a statistic is what he was. He's like, you're not going to be that lazy fucking statistic. I was like, going to go to like this, uh, normal uh normal organization like rally he's like no you're not with your fucking hair and your fucking burnout sound and your surfboards and hanging out the back busted window of your car no that's not what we need on camera while we're trying to get this shit legalized <laughs> let the doctors and the lawyers take care of it and i was like you're right man i'll just stay here <laughs> <laughs> just fucking smoke i'll just wait <laughs> But uh, he wouldn't let me, yeah, no, it was like, I got high most of the time at work, learning a new job, which was really difficult, actually. But once I figured it out, and now it's like, I, I don't smoke much at work right now because I work with a new builder, <laughs> and uh, I don't think they're really into it, and I'm just not going to deal. I already have to listen to, like, anytime I fuck something up, you know, cut a board the wrong way, or... Right after lunch, do something wrong, not thinking about it. And they'll be like, what, you go for smoke a fatty during lunch? It's like, yeah, you say that because I got the hair, huh? It's almost being racist if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, yeah, Brad, you are a race, yeah. No, yeah. It, dude, it was uh, weird because I had only worked in, like, my small town. And, like, there's, not, like, not much life experience there. Worked at McDonald's in Edwardsville. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna smoke weed. Uh, that's gonna derail this whole show. <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll get this show really started. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get some viral clips for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I worked at McDonald's and like everyone was high all the time. You have to be. My boss, my 40 year old boss, was like, "Hey, bro, we should like uh, smoke weed sometime." And I was like, "I hope you're. I hope it's like a gay thing, and you're just not trying to hang out with me." <laughs> You know, that's that's how burner burnouts fucking, you know, I met some some of my best friends. That's how we became best friends was all over weed. Like my best friend of all like, you know, one of the ones on top, like up there with Antonio and shit. Antonio's not because we were like kids playing basketball. I had the same birthday and the same Tupac posters on the same wall because we lived in apartment buildings that were identical. <laughs> I was like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> yup. <laughs> and uh, but. Like, my boy Box back on the beach, man, I met him because I was selling pot. <laughs> and uh, I was new to the area. I just had a really good connect with my boss for weed. <laughs> and I was, I met him through there. He's like, dude, you should come to the party with us. And I was like, ah, cool. I don't know my way around here. I'll pick you up. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll bring the weed. He picks me up and he drops a fucking six pack of Mickey Wide Mouse in my driveway. My dad's driveway at that. Mickey Wide Mouse? Uh, yeah, they're like, it's this cheap, gross beer. And uh, they come in these little red keg bottle looking things. I mean, green keg bottle looking things. And anyways, I get in the car with him and he's hammered. Like everyone in the car is hammered. The two has two other buddies, Jay and Squad. And it's like, fuck. Do you guys want me to drive? Like I've been drinking nothing, and they he looks at me all sincere, like, "Would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you do that?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, can you get me there?" And uh, yeah, I ended up ruining that party, and like, and I was bad for that because at our age, you know, teenagers, twenty, early twenties, going out there with the weed I had, I didn't realize people didn't smoke like that. My friends said they got high. Okay, they all, like, five of them got a blunt together. and They didn't sit in their room playing video games, taking bong rips in between each one like me. So, like, but I'm bad for that. If I, jump, if I get into something, I get into it. 
not like I, I've never done heroin. Let's just get that on. The table. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done any like real hardcore drug. A little bit of cocaine. I've tried meth. I mean, who hasn't <laughs> who hasn't done Adderall? <laughs> Me actually. You've never done an Adderall? No, I figured that you were not. prescribed it. Exactly, right? <laughs> I was prescribed it. That's why I can say I tried <laughs> meth. It's the same thing. Once I did some research into it, I watched if actually a YouTube video came on and I was like, Oh, that's interesting. That's what's the next one? And then you hit two that's similar and the algorithm's like, Oh, you want every meth fucking video we have and I'm too stoned to try to find the remote now and it's like, guess we're learning about everything about meth. And yeah, meth and Adderall are basically the same thing. They just can't synthesize. They don't have the raw product that, like, in the labs that the pharmaceuticals have. They have the what they, you know, extract everything right from. They have people on the street have to buy, use byproducts as far as, like, pseudoephedrine pills and or the match strip shit, I guess, or whatever. They have to pull that. When you, they can buy that pure. They're, they're trying to extract chemicals to make other shit, I guess. I don't know nothing about the cooking shit. I've tried the uh, the Addies and the Vivants. Vivants are great, by the way. <laughs> if you're prescribed <laughs> Vivants, them motherfuckers will have your house clean. You will have written a whole new set. <laughs> I hear they are super Adderall Vivants. They are, and they're not as uh, they're supposedly not as like. I could be a dumbass with this, but I believe doctors said when the last time I got prescribed them, it was like, they're not as habit forming, supposedly. I was like, well, they're pretty new, so how can you have any studies on that, doc? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, the brain receptors, because that's all uh, ADHD is just a brain, a neuro uh, uh, kind of disorder with dopamine and, and, and like the, 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 the pleasure reward uh, chemical that's released in your brain. So you got to keep our attention. Like we can go through topic to topic to topic. If it, and, and if it's something doesn't keep our attention long enough, we're on to the next one. Yeah. There's like a million things to think of all at once. Yeah. I, uh, I see it on my podcast when I'm editing. I'm like, dude, we just jumped from fucking aliens to comedy, to fucking porn back to aliens. I mean, those are my three favorite things to talk about though. So, oh, well, I know all about the aliens. You know about the <laughs> aliens? Yeah, man. Like, look at the telescope. They'd be talking. <laughs> do, you, do you think it's uh you got to take drugs to talk to the aliens? Uh, no, not the physical ones that we see as far as that they, that they have like some kind of blurry Bigfoot imagery, <laughs> you know, always pixelated. But there's a good explanation for that. No one, none of these. Are, yeah, everyone has phones. And everyone that catches these videos, they're all pixelated because our phones are meant to take pictures of like capture to focus on something up close to us and not a far away. That's why if you zoom in, it just gets blurry. Um, so I, I guess that's a, a, a way to debunk the debunkers on why there's a blur. There's always so blurry, but there's some good videos out there. And well, just about a year ago, the Pentagon came out and said they had recovered an unearthly made vehicle. I mean, they found a vehicle that was not from planet earth. Yeah. It was either aliens or Israel <laughs> and everyone hopes aliens. Well, Israel came out in their space chief of security. Um, the, the, the chief, security chief of space uh, which works closely with nasa because israel and uh the israel air, air israel's got a pretty badass air, uh, air force and and everything rockets and, and all all that shit they're like yeah. besides us of course and i think china and russia is pretty badass but israel's right up there with one of the top air forces and uh so they, they work closely with nasa they're like cia is huge too i don't know what their cia i I don't know what is it like. A, is it the Mossad or am I? They, it's what is it like Mossad or M sixteen? No, that the M the M. I think that's the James Bond universe. So I don't. <laughs> no, that's the ones that the Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, the British, I believe. That's their special force of uh, CIA or whatever it is. One of the UK, one of them European fuckers that we ran away from because we were tired of taxes and we were like, no, fuck that. We'll pay taxes to our own government. Oh, well, this didn't work out, did it? <laughs> yeah, I, there was so much shit in the news today about the royal family, and I have I don't give a shit about the royal family. I did at all. see something on like the YouTube because I jumped on there looking at um, Jimmy Dore. I like a Jimmy Dore. Do you fuck with Jimmy Dore at all? I fuck with Jimmy Dore. Yeah, Jimmy Dore cracks me up, and he like calls motherfuckers out, <laughs> like how he had he had fucking AOC. 
Oh, he had her all worked up and shit over that uh, forced to vote shit. I was like, yeah, give it to her. But I don't, have, I don't like either side. I'm like, fuck both of them, motherfuckers. Okay. Now that I've said I fuck with Jimmy uh, Dore, I realized I don't know who the fuck that is. So uh, Jimmy Dore is a comedian, but he also has his own little show that he brings on. He he uh, calls out a lot of political issues and a lot of. But he's a he's a he was a touring comedian, been around for a long time as a full like professional comedian and okay. now he does his own little podcast out of his back uh out of his garage so uh, i think he started with tyt do you know who that is saint junior is saint younger uh and anna caspier no i don't <laughs> uh you're, you're not on the youtube uh uh-huh, too much no i'll uh i i watch like the same people i've watched for like five years on my youtube so who's that uh, it's just like, uh, I'll watch like gaming stuff or, uh, there's like some like fun, like, uh, it's like topical, like news shows that I watch too. Well, turn me, turn an old man on. What's, what's the, what's the cool shit nowadays? Uh, internet today is a really cool one. They're, uh, it's internet today. Like it's the internet. What is that? Yeah. No, they, uh, <laughs> they used to work for machinima and they were called ETC news and then it got changed to show, uh, but they've gone independent because apparently machinima is not a great company. But yeah, they'll just make fun of like the craziest news stories that they can find that week. And okay, that's kind of like I, I, I that's kind of like what Jimmy Dore is. He just, but he calls out like he does it in a way to where it's like, hmm, yeah, the Democrats did say they were gonna give two thousand dollars within the as soon as the they got into office. <laughs> yeah, I, apparently they signed one yesterday. Yeah, I guess it did pass supposedly, but they they fucking. They stripped a bunch. They, 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 they. I think they got cut out another twelve million people that would qualify. Basically, like uh, the middle class suburb family. I think it was up to seventy or fifty thousand or something like that. Won't be. Uh, starts getting a, a lower number. Oh well, dude. I'm a college student, so if they want to cut me a check, that would be cool. Anything, so I don't have to get a job for as long as possible. <laughs> You're right on that Zach Bukovich level. <laughs> yeah, I thought he had a job. No, he's been riding that unemployment, he told me the other night. <laughs> I don't blame him, dude. I know people who have been getting checks since March. Yeah, I got it. Uh, the guy I was working for was pretty much robbing Peter to pay Paul. He was all behind on bills, I guess. COVID kind of shut him down. So I was out of, I got lost the job because of COVID, got the unemployment fine for the first time. I've ever claimed gotten like some kind of benefits and I've always been in like construction. I've worked, always worked two jobs, usually restaurant like bartending or cook and then uh, construction during the day. And so I've paid my taxes <laughs> and paid and they owed me backlog motherfucker. And after they cut the extra 600 or whatever they had going on, it was like, that's not worth it. If I'm not making a grand or more a week it's not worth it so i was right there about a grand and i was going to work with my buddy that had a, a little bit of a moving side gig thing so i was able to make uh two three days a week i could get like 250 bucks cash plus tip and uh, that would like put me over that you know 1200 dollars mark a week it was nice me and my old lady went took a trip to Virginia. We were like, "Oh, let's go try." The day everything got shut down and, and everyone got put on lockdown, we were packing up the car to go to Florida for a reggae fe- reggae rise up oh. festival. Had an Airbnb booked for like two weeks. I had a bunch of fucking little shows lined up on, like on the way there. I was gonna hit a couple clubs up. All got shut down. I was I was quite butthurt. Dude, yeah, it really sucked at first. I was. At the start of the pandemic, I was like one of the first of my friends and family to like go into hiding because I was I was scared at the start. Uh, I, I, I follow too many like conspiracy theory shit. And like I really I'm not like I hate saying the conspiracy theory, but because it's like more or less I like the guys that are going to bring in like the real information. Like I like unclass or declassified documents that like were buried amongst a million other documents that the CIA and the FBI release and then people go through these channels will go through and find like little bits and pieces of some crazy shit those are the things I like and the fact like the COVID thing okay back in 2015 or something like that there's a viral virolo- virological lab in Chapel Hill North Carolina 
and they were in po they were made an article in the science or the medicine magazine talking about manipulating the covid strand to be more susceptible to human genome and they caught a bunch of backlash and they shut the program down but they didn't really shut it down everything got transferred and you can follow all the paperwork and the money right to the Wuhan virological lab and it's like Okay, now I can see where there's a bunch of conspiracies. This is where conspiracies come from, right here, because there's too much fucking, like, too many red flags that they're not talking about. And then you find out about that Agenda 201 shit that they had at John Hopkins College with, uh, it was a whole simulation. You can watch it on YouTube. It's called, like, Agenda 201 or 21 or something like that. It was all these fucking Bill Gates and Melinda Gates and John Hopkins College and all these doctors and scientists for this for a virus, a pandemic, did a whole simulation, like fake news. Everything. It was like a whole video, like a three hour long video of a simulation of how each stage was going to happen. And it was dead fucking on. And guess what the kind of virus they used? Uh, a COVID fucking virus. But it came from a pig instead of a bat in their simulation. Uh, yeah, that's weird. I mean, I mean, all I'm gonna say, fuck the conspiracies. You, you did million dollar research simulation bullshit a year ago. You failed. Like it, <laughs> it, it, it was right here. You just did it. Don't say you were sleeping because you just had the fucking thing. Like you were still like getting the other doctors come off your fucking genes. <laughs> the, the, the doctors were too busy having gay sex to that's, solve COVID. That's what I figure uh, Bill Gates does with that fucking gay ass sweater that he always fucking <laughs> wears. Just butt fucking twinks. Yeah. If I didn't know Quentin and think he was such a good guy and seen his sweater, I'd be like, that guy fucking has seen one up close probably. <laughs> you say the same shit about me, so... No, no. I know too many. I had too many buddies that were like you back home. Uh, Fucking handsome or? Uh, <laughs> little cocky, <laughs> blonde haired son of a bitches that thought they were so great at surfing. But I still got the pussy. <laughs> you got the pussy. Because you hit the waves. I, uh. I was thinking about surfing and I would be fucking terrible, I can imagine. I mean, it's all. Uh, can you skate? No. No, yeah, you might not be too good. <laughs> Are you any good at snowboarding? Never it's the snowboarded. Opposite. That's like, uh, I'm bad. I'm not the best at snowboarding because I'm so natural with like surfing and skating and pools and, and bowls and shit. So I'm like used to leaning in and carving it with my body. And But that's not how you do it with the snowboard. You do it with all your hips. You just turn your hips to kind of do your carving and everything. You're not using your body weight. If you lean back, the fucking board's not flexible and you're not on water you're on like hard impacted shit so it doesn't like just give and, and you can't just like like i'm used to doing so yeah. i wanted to build a pool out here but you know you don't skate what do you do game fuck dude i i Besides go on walks roast i go on like walks is like my exercise that i do Okay. If I'm feeling good, I'll do push-ups. But yeah, man, I I live like right next to a walking I think trail. I need to get the steam off of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I like going on walks, doing some push-ups in the sun as it goes down. <laughs> I keep I keep as, it fit. <laughs> as it, as this, the the sweat glistens from <laughs> to a to an evening sun. <laughs> I know I, my workouts are not strenuous. I went on a walk with a with a Bud Light seltzer, and yeah, that's not working out. <laughs> I don't have to work out. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, I'm 20. I don't have to do shit. Oh no, you do. You do. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I I did yoga a uh -huh. couple weeks ago. I think I'm still good for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about yoga, but then again, it's like my job. I get all of that stuff with my job. Like the heavy lifting shit, get to do it. Stretching, get to do all that. With building houses, I'm pulling myself up a million times a day, like climbing up into trusses one part of the week, and then another part of the week I'm carrying lumber or building walls. It's just, it's pretty labor intensive. So it's, I don't have to go to the gym afterwards. We get gym rats all the time. We're like, yeah, I'm going to go to the gym after this. And it's like, yeah, you won't be doing that at the end of the week, buddy. Wait until we get to those roof trusses and you climb up and down, up and down fucking a hundred times today from this roof. Yeah. What the fuck? I was super into going to the gym in high school. And then I got this blue collar job. Uh, I was walking like nine miles a day minimum. And I was like, I'm, I don't work out anymore. What's a blue collar job? 
Like a like a manual labor job. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's what I got. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I build houses. I build I build mansions. Like the guy I do houses for did like Jim Edmonds mansion. I don't think I've done anything under ten thousand square foot. This is only two. Well, like twenty two hundred. <laughs> yeah, man, that's pretty fucking good. Yeah, they're huge. Like, I bet you get so fucking jealous just being like this motherfucker gets to live here. Yeah, when I see a guy put up a retaining wall to hold back some dirt that costs more than my house <laughs> and my property, <laughs> yeah, it's like, God damn, what do you do? But uh, you know, they they're better with money, smarter with it than me. They do know how to. They either have God earned it. Uh, by being smart with it or, or inherited it. And they're probably sex traffickers. Or that, that I've thought about that. Um, really have, but if I can't give them one of them Epstein kind of sex trafficking lifestyles, Gucci and all the shopping sprees. Did you see that? I was going to do a bit, but I was like, it's a little too soon for this bit, but I think it's ready for it. No, what's the bit? <laughs> what's this bit? Hey, did you watch any of the documentaries about like these girls, these young girls would be go to his island and he'd take them to the St. James and everything and they'd go on shopping sprees and all that other stuff? I want to know what a real sex slave watching that fucking shit is thinking. <laughs> it's like, that's not sex trafficking. That's... <laughs> That is not sex trafficking. Like you, oh, you I've been s- sucking dick since I was three. <laughs> you have it so much better than me. Yeah, yeah dude, do that bit. That's funny. <laughs> I don't know. I did not watch any of that Epstein shit because I did not believe a single documentary that got made. Oh, I didn't watch it. The, the, I'm not talking the main ones. I followed it pretty closely as far as the... I don't know why I got so into that one because it was like finally they're seeing... That they're all part, not the QAnon shit. The only basis that QAnon has is that there is a big issue with pedophilia in our government official political system. There's like 284 uh, convicted or alleged, has a, a allegations against them of some kind of sexual uh, shit with, with children or it's it's a little creepy when you when you really look at it. it's up for re-election too. How the fuck do they stay in office with these things? Wasn't it the Alabama governor was literally a rapist or a pedophile or something, and he still got voted in? Yeah, there's there's some crazy ones like uh, there's, and then I mean yeah, QAnon the, the the thing that pissed me off with QAnon and with all those conspiracy theorists people, the only the, the, every conspiracy has a little bit of facts. To, to, to pull you in and what they had was the wiki julian assange's WikiLeaks files that um he released all the emails and that's what they were using to build this whole conspiracy off of but you didn't hear none of them like talking about free assange while america's been trying to basically extradite him here to give him the death penalty for uh fucking whatever it is uh treason yeah, but he's not even a citizen of America. He's a fucking from Australia. He can't, you can't, and he didn't hack it. Like, they have the person that hacked the computers, Chelsea Manning. Yeah, well, I mean, what he did benefited the people, so I don't think anything bad should happen to him. That was good. Well, they, they stopped him in UK. They they, they, they wouldn't let him, uh, they, 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 they shut down the extradition, supposedly, but they're still trying to get him. And uh, I think they should let him go. It's... He's a hero, just like Snowden. Like, that's what they're supposed to do. Like, like how they're talking about Julian and, and Snowden are, they broke the law by exposing crimes that we were breaking, you know, laws that we were breaking. That How is that breaking the law? You can't break the law by exposing someone breaking the law. How can that be illegal? How can you be illegal to 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 shine light on <laughs> yeah he's, he's a whistleblower then right which yes. we love whistleblowers and i mean until they shoot themselves in the back two times yeah until it's the opposite sides of the party you know and it's like oh we don't like whistleblowers no more oh yeah oh so what was that 911 no pop this dude <laughs> yeah the 911 thing i i found probably one of the best there is some youtubers out there that are like i found one and he was actually just on tim Tim URL or Tim Cass. He's been on Tim, um, has been on um, Joe Rogan before, so he's pretty popular on the podcast scene. Tim Cast? Yeah, Tim Cast, I think is, is what it is. Is this Tim 
Pool. Yeah, Tim Pool. I think oh, his name. dude, fuck him. Yeah, no, but he had one of the guys I've been following for like a couple years, and he's been like a nobody, low quality bullshit. But he's a physicist that's got a like PhD in physics and all this other shit. And he goes through, and he is part of the community, the physics community, with all the colleges and academia. So he gets to see all the fucking new research and all the new crazy shit that they're doing, and he break break, break it all down. But he'd also get into the UFO shit. But when he first started, he did this video of 9-11 to where he tied. He did the whole, like, spider web of the... He went all the way down to George W. Bush's best friend in third grade that owed him a dollar. <laughs> like, how that's how he connected them all the way back. And how every little piece of... He's like, I'm not going to go in and say that this... Of how it was blown up. None of that. I'm just going to put this out. This information that, that never was put out there. Um, and the other biggest telltale is they only gave the fucking people uh, $12 million to do the investigation. They wasted over like a hundred and something on the Trump shit. That just shows you what they'll put in money. They put in and they gave them a year to do this shit, to do an investigation of the world's largest terrorist attack. And then they sealed all the findings from the public ever being able to see him. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that's no conspiracy there, bro. <laughs> well, dude, I, I had an epiphany with 9-11 recently. It's like I grew up like you know, like know what 9-11 is. I didn't realize how fucking crazy 9-11 was. Oh, did you watch like a real video of it? I mean, I've always seen the videos, but just one day it just clicked. I was like, they fucking flew planes into the Twin Towers. That is insane. And if that happened today, I would be freaking the hell out. Well, what's really crazy is that they had had that plan. That, that was a government. That was a project that the government. Uh, CIA had already planned and, and it had worked out and was they just and who was it I think it was uh, Kennedy had shut it down or one of the presidents that they brought it to at first had shut it down and they had revamped it into something else and it was everything that's where the conspiracy of the whole a big part of the conspiracy comes from in 9-11 is because the CIA had already used wanted to use this plan but for C Cuba when Castro was it, is it Castro or Gaddafi one of them they were trying to get the the American fucking you know backing to go to war with them and shut down because they wanted to keep their own currency that was backed by the gold and fed our central banks and and now they had no 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 and then we did the uh, iron you know Iraq and Iran uh, what was his name Saddam Hussein Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a CIA agent. He was trained by the CIA. Really? Yeah, yeah. He was he was a fucking CIA operative that was made that was actually trained and undercover to go in, infiltrate fucking the government there, overthrow it, and cause a coup, like a re regiment crew, and take over there. And then once he took over, and America supplied him with all the weapons that he needed for all of his rebel buddies that he got to throw overthrow the government and everything. Once he got into power and did what they wanted, now they're all in fucking chaos. The whole country is is basically in shambles. They, they you know, there's a, there's just rebels and, and all these terrorists that are running it now. They they have no control now. American could come in there and take everything over, and that's exactly what we did. That's that's like a their playbook. We are we don't go so much to war no more. We train these rebel groups we go in there and we give all these rebels so we don't have to we can have plausible de deniability like we had nothing to do with that you know there was they oh they had our weapons maybe they got stolen you know we the pentagon comes up with missing like billions of dollars worth of missing weapons every year yeah i mean it's gonna be weird i mean the history books are not gonna paint america very nice especially in the last probably 80 years post-world war ii i would say we're gonna be the villains yeah, like Britain is. I, yeah, I grew up with a uh, learned about the uh, slavery very like very very intensively. Like I remember watching Roots when I was like single digits kid. I grew up in a black family. It was something that was like you're gonna see this motherfucker. <laughs> like and at the end of it, you're looking at at the family like. I see why y'all are so mad at us. <laughs> uh, I'd say we're deep enough into this podcast where I can start shit talking. My, uh, I came home a couple weeks ago and my roommate, piss drunk, looks at me and goes, dude, you know what movie fucking bangs roots? Oh my and God. I was like, what the fuck? Is it, it's supposed to be one of the saddest movies ever made. And he's just like, dude, that movie's fucking good. Like he was talking about it like it was Creed. 
Oh man, that's uh, yeah. I don't know. You're don't don't na- mention your buddy's name. <laughs> <laughs> I said roommate. It's one of two people. So, uh, and you're not you're not rooming with Gaff uh, Bukovic, are you? No, uh, yeah, I'm okay. one of the only comics not living with him apparently. <laughs> What is he uh, not paying his mortgage because of this mortgage moratorium or whatever, the, this hold they have on mortgages until – because that shit's not going to fly. Like we, were, we looked at it and we're like, no, you just have to end up paying like oh, – we're up to like almost a year now worth of fucking rent – I mean mortgage to the banks all at once. Once that shit clicks, it's like once, the, once they pull the card, it's like, all right, now you owe us that money now. Oh, they all want it the all at pay. once? Yeah. Oh, that's not going to go over well. Yeah, no, they, they, they fucked us. They, they really did. Like, people don't... Uh, with the COVID thing, they, they were too worried about the pandemic to pay attention to what these politicians were doing. All right, let's just put it the simplest of easiest ways that someone as dumb as me that's drugged, ab- abused drugs, everything else, is, looks at the situation, and it's pretty fucking simple here. Pandemic, they want us all to shut down and stop going to work. Okay, to stop the virus from spreading. All right. Well, you guys are going to need to put in some relief. All right, well, we're going to do like $4.25 trillion worth of relief. Awesome. So you're going to be able to give the people that have to stay at home and not go to work and earn any money to pay their bills, their loans, not the bills, their loans to the banks. They got to pay their loans to the banks so the banks don't fail and that they don't lose everything. Okay. So what are you guys going to do? You all four points. So you're going to give the people, you're going to make sure the people are, are, you know, full and, and, and they're, you know, stable throughout this whole thing. No. Fuck we're we're going to just give the money to the banks. So the, so these, they don't have to pay the banks then. So they're good on their loan. No, no, we're just going to pause the loans for a little while. Oh, so you're going to put the loans on the back end of the loan? So now if they owed three years, the six months that they're not going to have is going to get ticked on to three years, six months now, right? No. After six months is up, they're going to owe all six months. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> stupid motherfuckers? You McConnell, you Pelosi, fucking just long, long bridge. <laughs> Short rope. <laughs> I, I think they should all be assassinated. Who runs Chase Bank? I think we need to take him in the street and shoot him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'll lead the charge. <laughs> hey, when I was seeing the siege, as they've been calling it, the capital siege, I was like, oh, shit, it's going down. I don't even care if it's the QAnon fucks. They're doing it. We're doing it. No, We're dude. doing it. I was in here, like, cleaning up my guns and shit, like, woo. No. Well, I was getting my, my best woo. Oh, and you know, <laughs> I I was at work when that shit was going down. I was looking at coworkers like, oh my fucking god, they're storming the Capitol building right now, and they're like, that's crazy. Can I still get high after work? And I was like, no one gives a shit about any. So I've taken that on. I don't give a shit anymore. Uh, no, you can't. Like, what's going on in the media and the news today is uh, something completely different. They're not a. The, for, first off, news used to never be profitable. It wasn't a profitable thing to own a newspaper. It wasn't a profitable thing to know, own a news like the Washington Post or the New York Times. It wasn't a big profitable thing. They did it as kind of a public service in a way. They made their money by ads, the ad sections, stuff like that. And they did news. Now they are making millions and all they focus towards is ratings. That's why we've only seen anything about Trump. That's why they're scrambling. They're running around like their heads cut off right now, not knowing what the fuck to do. The CNNs and the MSNBCs are trying to get rid of Fox and all these other competitors so they can at least keep some ratings. Fox and all of them are like, well, we don't have fucking shit to talk about anymore because no one gives a fuck about Biden. He's fucking gone. They're just waiting for Kamala to come in and take over. Then that would be a couple good weeks of ratings because I guarantee you by the end of this four year, we're going to have a dirty cop named Kamala <laughs> as our fucking president. <laughs> the first w- woman and dirty cop. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think Biden's going to make it through a term. But, like, he's so fucking annoying in his aviators and his fucking licking ice cream cones. Did, I Fuck off, Biden. Did you see the other day? They was like, he did, a, like, a press conference or something. Well, came out and said, uh, spoke about something and then said, I'll, I'll take questions now. And they cut his feed. They, they cut the live feed from him answering any of his questions. It's fucking... 
hilarious. He's gone. Like it's it's not that hard to see. And that's I said the same thing about Bernie. I was like, Bernie just ain't got it. He don't have a backbone no more. When he laid down and fucking took it in the ass to Hillary and the DNC admitting to cheating him and still went back and supported that fucking nasty cunt dried up fucking you know if i was bernie i would have got on that stage and be like i want to see the video of hillary clinton eating that baby oh yeah i would have been using it using it but no he's but but bernie's like you know he's my friend (laughs) (laughs) it's my good friend my good friend it's like no they're not your friends they can't they try to cancel you for going on joe rogan (laughs) like so i don't get that whole I I mean I get he has like right wing people on I don't get trying to shut down Joe Rogan though. And Joe Rogan is the most fucking e- equal. Like you can't put a label on him. He's left. He's right. They, there's just there's there is a, a large group of people out there. If you are popular, if you're famous to a point a level a certain level, there's just gonna be haters. That's just how it is. If you're the most pop, just like in high school, that most popular kid. There was kids, those, those, the, 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 the ones that were like, just hated fucking shit and hated, never, those popular kids never did anything to them. Not their fault that they fucking wore fucking makeup and goddamn yeah. jeans that were like parachute jeans with all this metal shit. Not their fault. And they were never mean to you. So, but they still didn't like him because they hated her. That's, a, that's just, a, there's a group of people out there that's very large and Joe Rogan's the biggest out there. One episode of Joe Rogan gets more views than CNN, NS, NBC, all of that put together. You put their prime times together, Hannity, all Tucker Carlson, all of them together, and Joe Rogan releases one episode, and it's it gets like 12 million downloads. Downloads. Yeah. It, no, Not, it's. I've never downloaded a fucking thing. <laughs> my phone auto does it. It's fucking annoying. But yeah, man, they're like the Super Bowl broke records. Like ten million people watch it. I'm like, well, yeah, no, Rogan will get like, he'll get like twenty two mil if he has like a really big guest on. Yeah, like Elon. <sighs> I mean, dude, when he smoked weed on that show, though, the fucking internet lost its mind. Oh, yeah. It was insane. I love the Alex Jones ones. I think that is he is because he really knows how to use. Alex Jones to his full potential and how he checks him facts checks that motherfucker now anytime he brings him on he's like Jamie's up back there with like three computers just, <laughs> going just to town. losing his fucking mind I dude I loved it when it was his second one they did like four and a half hours and he's just like they were the Nazis were killing themselves and talking to the aliens on DMT trips I'm like he's so hilarious and entertaining and Listening to him for 10 minutes, I don't get how anyone ever took him serious. Uh Uh-uh. So, let the man... Like, you're dumb if you think what he's saying should have any... uh, Was it bolivity? Is that the right word? Something like that. uh, That word. Yeah. Yeah, it's dumb to be like, yeah, this guy knows something. Yeah, well, he really did. And and what what really happened is what he got... uh, What they really tried to cancel him for is because he was... he, He did back Trump for a little while. Um... But he wasn't a Republican. Before the whole Republican thing is he was going after Bush. He was arrested for harassing Bush when he was on his campaign tour. He would follow him around with signs calling him a fucking war criminal and should be arrested <laughs> and, and put in prison and all this other shit. All, oh, speaking of the world trade, that's my leftover cracker shit. Yeah, no, I know. That's why I brought up 9-11 <laughs> so early was that. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's the leftover crack. They had to change it to that because they, had, uh, they were about to release their album. Um, and it was at first, I believe it was uh, Shoot the Kids at School. And it was right around with Columbine when Columbine happened. And it was like a, just a hand on the album art with a, a gun and blood dripping down it. And the name was, and they were like, yeah, we just can't do it. And they're like, all right, well, we're doing the uh, World Trades at Fuck World Trades because they had a song about that. <laughs> And what's crazy is their story is the drummer, he left. He worked in the building that got hit and came down, but he had left for a tour with Leftover Crack because they were just starting to get a little big. And the person that took his place and he trained died, I guess. It's a gnarly little story. but Imagine being on like one of the bottom floors during 9-11. Just be like, did you all hear something up there? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Was, was, we should get the fuck out of here. That was weird. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, there was uh that's it's they, they, they there's a big huge there's like thousands of um 
architects, like famous architects and scientists and all fields of studies. And then first responders that were there um, that have signed a petition for them to open up the case and reinvestigate because uh, that have signed a petition on the 9-11 thing. Even people from like John Hopkins Architectural School, they're like, we've ran supercomputer fucking uh, for 11 years for them to try to figure out how those buildings would, how building seven came down is just a, a office fire brought it down. It's supposed to be able to withstand like bombs and it got taken down by some office fires that the uh, fucking uh, fire department had is on radio recorded saying fire is out. The build the, the, the office fire has been put out and then all of a sudden it just comes down. Perfect. Like, so it, it it, there's I, a lot of it's there's just too much evidence like in thermite the thermite alone is like the dead giveaway there's thermite in all the dust which thermite is an explosive used for demolition yeah i think 9-11 is going to be a lot like pearl harbor and like us getting into world war one it's going to be like give it like 50 60 years and then they'll be like okay well we'll tell you a little bit more because like i know world war one we came in under false pretenses uh and pearl harbor we had known about but again needed to rile up patriotism yeah just uh, so the, i don't know same thing with the uh korean war they uh no no yeah yeah korea war um nam no nam they had claimed that a ship had been attacked and and taken down and, and bombed and it never was. The guys came into harbor like, "What's up?" And everyone thought they were dead and shit. And what like, a shitty fucking excuse. Just World- to be able to go to war, yeah. Yeah, no. World War One, we thought Mexico was going to invade us. Uh, Pearl Harbor, they attacked Hawaii, and then for Nam, they were like, "Oh, they attacked a ship." Who gives a shit about a ship? We, <laughs> you yeah. know, they. Did. But the movies, the movies. The oh. movies they're gonna have is gonna be so great. <laughs> oh my, this, the movies that the CIA makes, starring Ryan I, Reynolds. Yeah, and, I hated them. Fucking all the, uh, those kind of war movies suck. I've never been into the war movies. For one, I don't agree with war at all. Like, what I'm one you of the, don't? What? No, like I've never met somebody. I've never met another human being. It's like, yeah, I just won't kill them. Well, I guess I have. I've worked with probably a couple that are like, yeah, we could just bomb them motherfuckers. That's what we should do. It's the same ones that are like, the government's going to take their guns. But they think the government, but they believe in the government taking over the rest of the world. It's like, pick a side, bro. <laughs> it's so, yeah, it's, uh, they'll just do whatever fits the agenda for the week. I grew up in, uh, right down there, world's largest fucking military base in the world, uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, I've seen what they have. They're not worried about our guns, dude. Like, they have remote controlled drones. <laughs> that that are badass the shit that they have is just mind-boggling in the amount of it that they have is just if that's what you can see in public view <laughs> like <laughs> there is so much more we have underwater tunnels which you drive through to get to one part of virginia to the other and shit you're just driving along a bridge and all of a sudden it just goes into the water underwater that's sick as hell i didn't know those existed oh yeah yeah, it's uh don't get stuck in traffic. Fuck, you get a headache from all the. They say there's filters, but them bitches. It's an old fucking tunnel, old tunnel, and they're building a new one supposedly. I don't know. No man, that's really fucking cool. I like that stuff. I um. Uh, Virginia is a cheap place to go visit. Tourists take a gold lady, take a chick that thinks you're fucking, you know, Willie's actually big. I'll do. I'll plop it on the table right now. <laughs> He's like, don't tip me. <laughs> He's like, pull it out. I've uh. <laughs> I went whitewater rafting in um, uh, West Virginia when I was like 16. That was wild. I had to shit in the woods. Oh, West uh, Virginia? Yeah. yeah that's a, the worst state to drive through. <laughs> it's the Dude, longest. Oh, my fuck. You just uphill the whole time. Up and down windy ass roads and shit. Yeah, and you were going down the rapids, so you were going straight up. Yeah, just driving through that one in Virginia. The middle meeting point from here to there to Virginia Beach is right on the other side of the line of West Virginia. That's how much driving there is to get through Virginia because you got to go through it like the longest way possible each state. And we go the other way. It adds on like an hour, it says, but you don't have any tolls. And you go through Tennessee and everything instead and come up through um, Indiana and all that good shit. Yeah, I, uh, I went to go visit my girlfriend in Tuscaloosa one time. Uh, What's that, Oklahoma? 
That's Alabama. It's Alabama. Alabama. Uh, I went to go visit her down there, and uh, I wanted Qdoba. So I stopped off, and I was going into a Qdoba, and I pull up to, like, a toll, and I get up to it, and I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. And they're like, this is a military base. You need to leave. And <laughs> yeah. I was freaked the hell out. I would have pulled out my military ID and be like, let me in, bitches. That's right. I'm a dependent. <laughs> nah. Bro, I was a terrified 19-year-old kid who I thought the federal government was going to chase me down for some reason. <laughs> yeah, my buddies have had that shit happen to them out there in Virginia. These co- The college uh, uh, kids uh, knew lived out there by Langley a little bit, and these dumbasses would get, go smoke blunt, blunt route or whatever. You know, they all get in a car and hot box it. Well, they're driving down certain roads out there in Langley where the CIA bases well outside of langley you know we can get into there and you go down the wrong road and all of a sudden you're met with fucking rvs and, and fully that's the cia ba- training grounds and bases and shit all over like you don't know they just pop up out of nowhere they're like what are you doing here you didn't think to turn around that's long of a road <laughs> like no man <laughs> don't you smell us <laughs> like fuck imagine telling that to a cia agent bro i'm fucking stoned bro i don't i can't do shit <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I've got a long rap sheet when it comes to weed charges out there. <laughs> I've I've talked my shit to them. I, I always did. Once I learned, I was like, oh, they're not gonna do nothing to me about it. They're gonna give me two hundred dollar fine, six months on pro, pro, on supervised probation. Might as well have a little fun with it. <laughs> Dude, that's I I did not grow up in a time when weed was bad, and I actually have a very this was white privilege for sure. What happened? Um, I was going to. I'm not sharing this with my family. I'm sorry, Brad. <laughs> I'll, uh, so I was going to see Avengers Infinity War opening day. No, I think it had been out for about a week now. So I'm going there. Uh, me and my friend go, and we smoke a blunt on the way. Uh, I get one of the most highs I've ever had, and I didn't think we were even going to make it to the movie alive. And I get into the parking lot. I'm so excited. I do a victory whip into my parking spot, fucking clip a bumper of a car. And Pack I would, up and go to the other side of the parking lot. <laughs> no, dude, I, I hooked my shit in there. Oh. So uh, my friend gets out and he dips. He's he, like, I'll see you later, bro. Yeah, yeah. He, he was gone. And I was going to hit and run. I was just going to be like, I'm, I was high. I was scared. So I was just going to drive. And then a family comes over and goes, shit, call the police. Call the police. <laughs> Cop shows up, takes one look at me, and he's just like, fucking. Fill out this insurance form, man. Yeah, that's what I would. I, I've done. I, I uh, I hit and ran once, right in Virginia. The lady. Well, it wasn't my fault completely. I was at like it was two lanes. One on the side, and going two lanes of traffic going that way. We were at a light, and this trap there was traffic backed up. So there we were at a light. The guy flashed me on. The lady behind him comes all in out and wants to just basically sit in the middle of the road. And as she does, I t-bone her, and I had a shit ton of weed and like these little fucking containers of Tupperware I had. I had all kinds of Tupperware in the car too because I pulled down like this street called Church Street, which is where white people don't get caught in Norfolk after the sun goes down. And it's right around that time, but I find this abandoned like church. I go over there and I throw them underneath the crawl space. We don't have basements out there because it's so close to the water. Everything's on crawl spaces. And I throw these this Tupperware under there and my cousin talks me to go back to the scene of crime. So I go back, and thank God I did, because the cop's like, man, I'm glad you came back. You could have said you did not have sexual, uh, <laughs> whatever. He's like, you said you could have said you did not inhale. But you manned up, and you came back. And I had 24 hours to come get you in. Your license plate's embedded in the side of her car, so we got <laughs> you. <laughs> You're fucking good. And she's like, and he, she had you down T. She said, long hair, long blonde hair, red fucking uh, facial hair, and eyes the red as the devil's dick. <laughs> and I was like, and... He gave me, we filled out the, 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 the report and everything. Went to court. The guy that flashed me on came in, so I didn't get no points or nothing. She came in with, like, a neck brace on and oh shit. I walked out of there scot-free. I was like, ha, that lucked out there. But I know all about the white privilege. I've been in a weed charges and seen guys in front of me of, uh, that were either black or Mexican or something. And granted... They came in there and they didn't dress to tea. Me, I go suited and booted. I'm like dressed up like a lawyer, like the attorneys and that motherfucker. <laughs> I like getting dressed up for one time for, you know, 
usually I don't, I don't go to the court very often. If it's something, va- <laughs> I pay somebody to do it for me. I hire, I've got a very good attorney that I just signed the power of attorney over to him. He takes care of all of that. And I've yet to have to go to, uh, to court since I've found this guy. <laughs> that's pretty solid. I mean, if you're in court that often, that's, you don't want to No, good. I haven't been in trouble years. Last time I did, it was, uh, Fenton, uh, got hit with assault on an officer but I didn't assault the officer. He uh, told me he was going to build a case on me if I didn't start walking because I was waiting outside of Walmart. Uh, I had groceries, and I had just moved out here and just got a new place, my own place, and I was waiting for my ride to pick me up. And I just got off work, cashed my check at Walmart, did some grocery shopping, was waiting for my other buddy that lived with me to get off work, and he was going to meet me there, cash his check, and we were going to go down to my little spot I had just got on New Sugar Creek. And... He, a uh, cop pulls up to me and I had noticed him turn around. So I put my phone in my pocket and started recording this shit. And he comes up, he's like, I'm gonna give you one chance to start walking. I know you're up to no good. And he's like, I was like, what? I haven't done nothing wrong. I'm just waiting for a ride. He's like, I'm gonna give you one chance. I'll build a case on you real quick. Just start walking. So I said, fuck it. I started walking and shit. And uh, I called a supervisor. And his supervisor, I was like, I just can file a complaint. Your dude's being a fucking asshole, blah, blah, blah. I tried to tell him what was going on. And he kind of chuckled. He's like, well, what do you want to do about it? This is right around the Mike Brown shit, too. And I was like, you know what? This right here is why you boys are getting shot up left and right. And no one gives a fuck. And uh, within like 10 minutes, I had cops surrounding me and shit. And uh, if he would have actually told the truth, I would have probably gotten into some kind of trouble. But uh, I fought it with this guy and the the cop lied saying he had no altercations with me blah 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 i had the f- film of him saying he was going to build a case on me for no reason so uh, he wrote up that he didn't have any problems i was just trying to cause issues with the police department and I was, so i fought it we my lawyer went in there and fucking plugged the shit into the da's uh uh laptop and i was like he <laughs> looked at him as a man a father a fucking veteran <laughs> is that your word what you put on that report is that your word? <laughs> Is that your word? <laughs> and the uh, judge told him to move on, get on with it. DA opened up the uh, file, basically, the thumb drive. It didn't take about, about 20 seconds, and she closed the thing. She pointed at me, called me to come over. They gave me back my bail money. I never give me give a bail money back. They were just like, let's just not take this any further. Let's just end it here. <laughs> like, it never happened. And, uh, yeah, I went and got my bail money from the clerk of court. And she made that cop. She told him to wait until the end of the rest of the fucking people that were in there for court. I got lucky. Damn. Yeah, that's wild. Are, are there uh, <clears throat> laws now about um, recording in public like that? Or mm-hmm. that it's fully legal to record in public? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I know there's stuff with, like, two-way consent and stuff. Yeah, my dumbass went, uh, did it one time out on the east side. I was out there getting drunk, and we stopped at that gas station right there by Pops in the strip club. And this cop pulls up on this guy. This dude just pulled up to start pumping gas and shit. So I start recording him, and there's all kinds of – it's a weekend night. White cop pulled on over this black dude in a car at the gas station. So I start recording <laughs> and everything. Got mad props. <laughs> like, I was like, don't worry, I got you recorded. Wasn't a good idea because that cop sat out there and waited. Like, I had to sit in that strip club until the daylight <laughs> before that cop left, which I wasn't complaining. Just you and some tired strippers? Uh, and my old lady. <laughs> <laughs> I, that could make for a good time. Yeah, it was. Just not a good time with that ATM charge. It's like $12 a fucking pop. Fuck that. Dude, I am very not excited I'm very excited to be the legal drinking age, as I say, dr- sitting here drinking a beer. But, dude, I bought two shots of Jameson last night at a bar. It cost me $18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to learn real quick about the uh, either sell Coke or... No, I'm kidding, don't, sell Coke. <laughs> don't do that. Um, you'll find the right bars. Uh, backdoor, you'll see the backdoor's got pretty good uh, thing. Oh, and um, you're not... You, you, you're on unemployment. You can't afford Jameson, bro. No, I'm not on unemployment right now. I'm on uh, student loans. You definitely can't afford, but I just paid mine off like two years ago before, or three years, maybe four. When I bought this house, I had to pay off my fucking, all my student loans altogether, and it sucked. 
But. Yeah, dude. It fucking being alive is expensive. I mean, dude, I drive that fucking Tahoe. That gets like nine miles to the gallon. I, I know. I just sold mine. I got an old one. <laughs> dude, they are great, sturdy cars. But Jesus Christ, I we have to invade a country every time I want to drive somewhere. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's a good one. That's uh, luckily we got the lockdown in the uh, Middle East. Uh, Biden's out there bombing them away right now. Thank God we're going to have to invade Antarctica if I want to drive home. It's going to be... Well, you know, it's almost melted all the way. Have you ever gone down that conspiracy? What's this conspiracy? Oh, man. The Antarctica's got some gnarly ones. Like Admiral Byrd from the uh, Navy. He's like this famous uh, explorer. And uh, he, was, he just he's the one that flew to and explored the North Pole and the South Pole. And went first one to go out there and then like explore it really. And they took like this huge military fleet out there after they had found it. And they were supposed to go out there for like this expedition for like months. And they uh, came back. It seemed like they were retreating from some kind of battle with somebody out there. And it goes into the whole Hitler had found um, advanced technology. Cause Hitler was working on like, his own propulsion, like um, self-propulsion machines. And like he had UFO schematics and like most of our NASA and CIA is all of, if you look into the history, which is another unspoken one, but most of our CIA is the OSS, which was the Germans fucking, um, the Hitler's fucking scientist and, and their CIA. We brought the scientists and engineers before we ever really got into the war. We came over and were like, hey, this shit's about to go down. When it goes down, you come over here with us. We got you. And they gave them fake names. That's why they all of the people that were valuable, that's where NASA and CIA was built out of. That's where all the uh, the uh, MK Ultra program, the Midnight Mockingbird project, all of these mind control with like LSD and and like they were doing all kinds of crazy experiments on the public without them knowing. And this was all fucking uh, projects and experiments that were originated from the uh, German Hitler, Hitler's fucking uh, little division of whatever the fuck you would call that intelligence. I mean, they have to still be doing experiments on us. Oh yeah. To this, I mean, social media has to be a huge one. There's a, uh... 260 something that the um, America has come out and admitted to the government has admitted to uh, of experimenting on um, the public without them knowing my I grew up hearing about the stories of, from my stepdad about how because he grew up down here downtown where they had done all the they tried they did like the Tuskegee or whatever where they injected uh, all the got black poor men with uh, syphilis and shit as an experiment they also sprayed a bunch of the fucking urban neighborhoods down there with this test this chemical that is like cancerous and all this other shit and uh, the syphilis one's horrible because they had a cure for it they had a cure after a couple of years but they refused to give it to them and allowed them to pass it on to their kids and their wives and and all that other shit. The syphilis and syphilis is gnarly. That's why they wore wigs and all that other shit back in the day. Because it was like it would eat your face. It like makes your shit rot out over time. Long, long after having a long time. What was the purpose of giving everyone syphilis? Uh, they were just seeing what it would do. Long term <laughs> effects of it were. Did they have the fucking rats for that? <laughs> I, I yeah dude i look it up man it's all real it's all documented just like the government was found guilty for martin luther king's uh juniors uh in court they were found guilty of fucking having a hand in, in his death oh yeah they did that shit. Too, yeah so they 100 percent did that shit just like jfk <laughs> like that that shit's too, too many little things have slipped up on the jfk thing now it's like, yeah, it, he they they blew his shit off. <laughs> yeah, it. I wish that's on video. You can see his fucking whole body. You don't get hit by a bullet and, and, and go back. You don't get hit in the back of the head and go this way. <laughs> like that's just the laws of physics ain't working there, dog. Like huh, we learned this shit in grade school. No, they fucking whacked him. Uh, they don't really have the balls to assassinate a president anymore. I don't think. No, I think we would have seen it with this last one, or at least the black one. 
Appar- so uh, there has been an assassination attempt on every president except Obama, Trump, and I think maybe Bush, too. Um, uh, but not even Bush. That's unfortunate. I, I'm unsure, but... I think they lie about that kind of stuff. I've seen clips of Trump being rushed off stage after like loud bangs. So I don't know if they just lie and say no one has tried to assassinate the presidents or not. Yeah, I, I, uh, I know that Bushes have been found guilty in the International Tribunal Court. And supposedly, I don't know if it's true, they're not supposed to leave the country. If they were to leave the country, they could be basically arrested and they have basically a death sentence on their head for the the war crimes that they've committed in the middle east and each one of the presidents after them have committed these uh, have been part of them just like their president now that's why i was like i can't get behind someone that's gonna vote for that like that has i mean since the fucking 90s he's been part of that yeah i I like how it took him two months to become a war criminal (laughs) biden that's very funny oh he was a big 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 Biden was fucking war dog back then when Obama days. He was, but he was making money. Him and his, him and, him and Hunter. I don't know, you can call it conspiracy, but it's all paperwork. It's all right there. Like, yeah, he was obvious, but everyone does it. I don't see why they were just making a big deal about Biden. But fucking half of Trump's family worked in the White House and had positions. <laughs> like, no one liked that, though. <laughs> yeah, like that's a, it's no different than Hunter working at the other place, really. Quit. Did, did you see Saturday Night Live when Biden won? No. It was the cringiest shit I've ever seen. And I, like, love uh, Maya Rudolph. I hated that they made her do it. So they, like, have everyone out on stage, and they're just like, we, we did it, guys. No, like, jokes or anything. Just the the room clapping. They're like, oh, my God, Trump's gone. And it's like Biden, Jim Carrey's, like, being sassy to Alec Baldwin. He's like, hey, would you, like, shut up, dude? And then everyone like loses their mind, and I'm like, this is stupid, and it fucking sucked. Yeah, the, everyone knows um, Biden wouldn't be president if it wasn't for COVID. Let's just be honest. <clears throat> you think Trump would have won again? All day. If it wasn't for COVID, his numbers were through the fucking roof, dude. He had the lowest unemployment through all for through, through Latin and blacks. He, he, markets were fucking i don't know how he manipulated the markets that well through those because we were up in a 13 year now bull market it's usually a corrected every four to seven years we have a a correction no we just been going straight up record highs every month baby and month and we i was expecting it to crash last in 2016 i was like who wants to be president the the market's gonna crash history says there's never been a market that's lasted that long record highs and we're still in that market right now that's been going up well we could be in a crash it just depends on what it does in the next couple days yeah i don't know anything about money everyone's on uh bitcoin now and like Lindsay, fucking tim dillon was making fun of Lindsay lohan having her own um bitcoin kind of thing I don't know what's going on with it, and I don't think it's real. I've been preaching Bitcoin for a while, though. I've, I've been saying to get into that mm. shit since it was like $16,000. When it dipped back down to 16000 last year, I was like, the a- analyst um, on the on Wall Street, all the big boys, all the bankers have been putting dumping millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in it, and they're saying that it could be fucking worth a hundred to two hundred thousand a coin by next year so what's the risk it's gone it's just the the records are there the data's there it just goes up it just keeps going fucking up yeah but it just sounds like a fun game that people are playing i don't think it's like a real thing it's a hedge it's it's right now it's an on the market when you an analyst that like everybody like pays attention to intel retail traders and investors to pay attention to they've all they've recently upgraded bitcoin cryptocurrency as less volatile mean less risky um than the actual stocks than actual owning actual stocks because stocks are so overpriced right now they haven't dipped that's what a correction is they dip back into like what the, the value price of a company and the product that they sell or the services they provide what they right now they're so overvalued like we've got what is it? Amazon and shit like that. That's thousands of dollars worth of share. They're not worth that much, really. No. They're not. 
Not with all the tax subsidies we give them and all the taxes that they don't have to pay because we give them tax breaks because they're job creators. Motherfucker, you wouldn't be Amazon without them employees. Like You can't expand and become a corporation from a small business if you don't have the people to hire to do that. So you have to have the consumer, you have to have the employee to be able to expand. If You, you, you can't just expand and buy all these buildings if no one's going to run them. Yeah, it... Um <clears throat> the whole thing doesn't make sense to me. I I only take Sucks. financial advice from Dave Portnoy. No, so no, no I'm totally that. fucking around, dude. Don't uh, don't you don't have to take I I get people all the time like Ratcliffe was asking me about like what I should have invested in. Because when this first shit happened with uh, the GameStop, I went to college for economics and civics and I really wanted to do something in the market and, and something with stocks because I seen that's how I could get rich. Never been rich seen how they lived though all the time down on the beach that i lived these people had 10 15 million dollar beach homes on the ocean that they come and stay in for two weeks out of the year it's like there what do they do what do they live like regularly so uh, i wanted that i wanted a taste of that and i knew that was the only way to get it realized i have to have some money to get into it first so i dropped out after like two and a half years i was like fuck it yeah i don't i've been um in my years that i've been like developing as a person i'm really trying to change what i view as like luxury items and like i i don't really care about having like rich dude shit as long as i can get like a chipotle burrito now i'm like very yeah. content with life yeah no i just um that's what I, I ask a lot of comedians like when they talk about making it or somebody that's made it it's like what is making it to you like to me I just need to be able to supplement the income I'm making right now. And I made it as a comedian. <laughs> I'll be a road dog, and that's making it. If I can supplement, if it can keep me from swinging a hammer for the rest of my life, shit, I'm, uh, that's making it. But some comedians, they want they need the fame. Some people want the uh, need millions. They want to get on Joe Rogan. They want to get on Johnny, not Johnny Carson, but, <laughs> you know, the late night shows. I... I think making it for me personally, it's like if I can make um, me and Kubi talked about this. He said a teacher's income and I'm like, that's that's a pretty solid uh, like if I had to set like a price at it, it would be a teacher's income. But also like as a comedian, you want the respect uh, of other I won't say other comedians, but you want the respect of people being like, OK, this guy knows what he's doing up there. He you just want to be able to get booked whenever you want. I guess that would be a good way to say it. Yeah, <laughs> not but but all, yeah. I guess it just that's walk part into of the to the club and be like, "I'm here," and they're like, "Oh, come right uh -huh. this way." Well, yeah, that would be very nice. <laughs> it's making it okay. Yeah, that's yeah. If I could supplement what I need to supplement the income I'm making right now, I think it's possible. After a few more, it's going to take a few years. Uh, if maybe if I would have started sooner and didn't make you know. How old are you now? I'm 31, so and I've been doing what I do for a while, and I uh, get paid pretty good. Uh, yeah. So it's hard to say when I I'm gonna have to eventually change my rules and be like, all right, maybe not supplement all my income because my income's starting to get pretty decent, especially the more benefits that pile on. The longer I stay with them, it's like fucking 401k matching uh, and insurance and all that other shit. It's like, huh. You know, maybe if I just, <laughs> I don't want it to get so good that I can't leave. I don't want to live in Missouri. Like, D fucking no. Like, I'm not from Missouri. I I've stayed here on and off a few times, but I've always left. I've always moved back to the beach, and I don't want to go back to the beach that I'm from. I want to go to, like, I want to go to Texas. I think that's going to be the next big hot, like, that's going to be the next L.A. or New York for comedy. Well, so I've been thinking a lot about what happens with stand-up comedy. I We're technically in a boom right now, they say. I can see comedy going way, not like downhill in quality, but like the quantity of comedians I can see going away because everyone my age wants to be a YouTuber, wants to be on TikTok, which is something that requires, I'm not saying no skill, but a lot less skill. They're, yeah, they, they, it's a different skill. Um but I've learned that it's to the the being being so fucking handy with the the computers and and videos and the editing and knowing how to it should take me forever to figure this out. Like I've I originally gotten two other cameras that I ordered and they looked like shit, so I sent them back 
and I was talking to the guy at a store. I was looking at some cameras, some new GoPros, and he's like, dude, you got the new iPhone. Like, just, it's just as, if you're not moving anything, if they're just a stationary, no movement, no action, you think that's, those specs are as good as a DSLR. <laughs> I was like, yeah. really? He's like, yeah. And he's like, you're going to get a great fucking video with that, that thing as long as you have somewhere to, you know, to put the, you know, you're going to eat up some, some storage but i just transfer it all into yeah right on the macbook whatever you use i mean i shoot i do sketches occasionally i'll uh record them all on my iphone on a tripod yeah see i've been wanting to do some sketches me and mike radcliffe worked one up about the wall street bet shit about the two guys uh started it and they were talking shit about the elite and these people making all this money and you know talking shit on the corporations and the rich people and then all of a sudden they got rich and now they're like people are like yo what are you gonna do with all your money you're gonna help out this organization like whoa 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 you're gonna have to pull yourself up from your bootstraps i can't fucking you know just give handouts to everybody (laughs) but we got one more tip for you all right what we're gonna do we're gonna short GameStop now, <laughs> and they're and they're like, the, the, there's a lot more to it. We wrote it up. It's it, it was a lot more, but that and I got another one. I want to use Nick for a blind guy. It's perfect. He's looking around, <laughs> stumbling around, looking for something, and he finally finds this little case. He goes and sits down and grabs the remote that he finds, and he hits play. And he pulls some gla- reading glasses out of the clay case and puts them on, and an audio book starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! He's always the the blind guy. Yeah, <laughs> I um, uh, when Crystalia made his apology video, I made a sketch uh, making fun of it. I'm, I'm really upset with myself because I I worked on it for about ten minutes, the writing side of it, and then I just went, okay, this is good. <laughs> Shot it, um, put it up. It got a lot more views than I than anything else that I'd put out, and I was getting genuine feedback from people. And I should have put in more effort if I knew that that many people. <laughs> they fucking hated it. I have to go through sometimes and delete certain comments on videos because I do a. I really been I fucked with the. Uh, I've been paying attention and, and watching videos and researching the whole YouTube algorithm, how to hack, not hack it, but be more susceptible to it. And I got into the short clips, the short videos. Basically, it's their answer to TikTok videos. So they're anything under a minute. You put hashtag shorts, and you can get put on the short shelf, and it just plays in people's feeds or whatever. It's the videos, the little short videos that go by. If you want to get <laughs> viral, have you tried having ginormous titties? Um, I, tr- I thought about that. I thought about that. Um, I had a doctor come over. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> But he just wanted to fuck me, so... <laughs> Let him titty fuck you. Yeah. Get the titties first. It's a... It's a weird game trying to blow up on the internet. It's very... Um, I don't know if it's... Some, at first, I was like, it'd be cool to get monetized and stuff. I was I was tracking all that. Especially now with the short clips. Some, some of my videos get... You know, there's some weeks I'm looking at... Like... I think this week I'm sitting, uh, it's lower because I, I went a whole week without putting nothing out uh, from all the snow and shit. Um, but I was sitting at like ten to 15,000 views and, and I'm up to like 500 watch hours this year. Um, subscribers suck though. <laughs> but I'm getting the view. Certain videos, like one of Quentin's I think got like, Six thousand. One of Rob's got like two or three thousand views. So, like the short shelf is where it's at. With if you're trying to get views, but it's not long. They're only short clips, so your view duration analytics go down. Yeah, everyone likes the short stuff now. Which is, how do you feel about people's attention spans? Because I, I have no attention span anymore, and me trying to. Watch a movie is hard. Trying to read a book is impossible. I can watch TikToks for two hours, though. I don't have TikTok. I have not jumped on it just because it's like, I didn't. I didn't have Facebook until Mike Tobin at the back door made you have it to sign up for his fucking list. I went. I was one of those guys. I got rid of it back in the day for years, and I was like, "Fuck it." There's no read to have. I was just getting angry on it. And I was talking shit to people that were like, my grandma. I was like. <laughs> what are you fucking thinking <laughs> you don't say that to your grandma 
And so I did not use Facebook through most of high school. And then I got into comedy and it was like, hey, everyone's on Facebook because we're all 40. And I'm yeah. like, all right, well, I guess I'm on Facebook again. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah, I've tried even other ones. Like, um, I'm I've got Clubhouse. Um, that's pretty cool, but I don't really do too much on the Clubhouse. Too much. It's pretty. Uh, but it's a cool. I like it. I like what they're doing with it. I think it's funny that there's a lot of people trying to shut it down in a way, trying to cancel it. As far as these reporters that aren't favored by them because they don't get to fact check everything. Well, do you remember on South Park they did a joke about it's like Twitter, but it just broadcast every thought that you have? Uh, uh-uh. I haven't so, watched all. There's so many. I, like after bigger, longer, uncut. Like, oh fuck! You are way behind on I, South Park. Yeah. Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I got the tattoo. That was like my shit. I I never smoked that much weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Squid Billies. <laughs> wow! Take a ride of a trip up truck. <laughs> no, but so uh. They do a joke. It's like they, you just broadcast every thought that you have onto the internet. That's what Clubhouse is now. In a way, yeah. They, they, they're, uh, there's a lot of... The people that invited me were... Um, I don't know how I got the, the invite. I signed up and immediately someone was like, oh, here's an invite. It was like right during the beta testing thing. So it was just all these entrepreneur shit and then black pride power like those were all the rooms that i all i found i guess that was the person that you know and i went into some there was this hating on the pink man i was like "Woo, not for me i'm gonna get out of here before they see i'm actually white (laughs) the pink man (laughs) we're pink man you put us outside in the cold too long put us out in the heat too long he ain't pink he pink (laughs) okay okay i gotcha i say something to embarrass you right now you're gonna turn pink (laughs) Dude, I am. I went outside in shorts and a t-shirt for the first time in a long time. I am pale. Yeah, I am fucking pale. Yeah, I, I'm ready for the sun. I'm ready to be back in just shorts and my tool belt at work. It's it's my favorite. But. Dude, I don't think I've been in the sun very much in the last year. Yeah, I think I would. I would love to see a test on the whole COVID thing. Uh, 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 maybe make me a graph. Um, <laughs> Give me co- co- have Kumo make me a graph. Have you seen that Kyle Dunnigan shit on Kumos? Have you? Do you oh know? no, I haven't seen his bit. Oh, but. it's fucking hilarious how he does the face swap shit and he acts like uh, Andrew Como. And he has this is Como's charts, but uh, yeah, I want to see about because nobody I didn't see anybody in my field of work get sick. Everybody was at work every day. No one, and we, but we're outside all day every day. Granted, we're not in the office breathing each other's shit in, but we're also getting vitamin, a lot of vitamin D. We're always in the sun. No matter what, we're getting that. that and it, that's a big thing for your immune system, like especially those Porter Johns. you got to go in there and bask in one of those once a day, do some methamphetamines, <laughs> and um, COVID-free, baby. <laughs> I, uh, I got COVID. Did you get COVID? No. I got COVID. So I'm saying I want to see a test on uh, people that like work outdoors that are like that were constru- I want to see construction workers, people that are physically labor intensive jobs that are outdoor because you're working out and you're outdoors with getting all that fresh air and vitamin D and all that good shit from the sun. Yeah, I mean, the more I think about, um, again, another thing with like growing up is like we do not do what our bodies need us to do. We like sit inside all day and we don't enjoy nature. We look at a phone and I'm like, we need to be enjoying just the outside every once in a while at least. Yeah, I usually I'm about to that point once it gets a little bit warmer, I'll be taking me a big heavy dose of uh, psychedelic and, and enjoying it outdoors. And then I'll, I'll get back into my outdoor thing. <laughs> It's, it's sometimes it does, that's something I that I don't do psychedelics out at like a festival or a rave or at a party, not my kind of thing. I do them at home and I I get to know me. <laughs> like usually, end up butt naked on my driveway. <laughs> my wife comes home, my dogs are laying on one side or the other, and I'm just like, I want to give this to everybody. <laughs> it's it's like it was psychedelics. I'm yeah, they're cool, but I don't know what's like, what do you get out of acid besides music sounds pretty good for a while? I uh, don't know. I don't even listen to music. I can't listen. I don't even fuck with electronics. I just, electronics are done for me when I'm on a, I take, 
usually a heavier dose. Um, and I, I'm not going to no, know. There was this one time an old lady was watching The Good Place. She was into that show, and I was fucking tripping balls. I took like some, uh, took a little too much. <laughs> and I went up there and got stuck watching that show. I was like, what if this show was real? <laughs> Dude, that show tripped me the yeah. fuck out. But um, but yeah, no. Usually, I end up outdoors, um, or deep, deep, lost, sitting. Like I'll, I'll, I'll just be like in deep thought, just like focused thought about some crazy. I when people, I really am able to actually use it for in a mind expansion thing because I'm allowed. I'll allow myself to be like. What if we <laughs> play that game and just keep going where my mind isn't like, that's impossible. No, you can just keep going. <laughs> Have like, you ever uh, had anxiety? Uh, that, that's a good psychedelic. Uh, uh, anxiety? Yeah, no. Ed, I've, the only time I've had an anxiety fucking <clears throat> fit is off of edibles, really. No, Concerta, depression. That one threw me for a loop. I tried to quit smoking and took uh, this Chantix shit. It fucked me up for a couple of days. Yeah, I uh, I just got back into smoking weed, and I'm trying to find what works for me. And I'm indica, is just what I need to smoke. Uh, it's not about that. It's uh, that, that's a myth actually. The sativa indica myth. Uh, it's actually the terpenes that are in it, and really, you can. There's plenty of indica strands out there that give you that head high. It's just uh, really the chemical composure and, and everything and the, the 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 percentages and the makeup of the, the, the plant um i know that's what everyone told you and i believe me i learned this like two three years ago while i was at a, sh a head shop and the terps were just getting super big and i was read a, i got the article around here the magazine but uh it's all about it said oh to the search of the sacred terp and um there are genetics, gen, uh, biological geneticists that um, are out there trying to find certain strands that have special, because terps take it to a whole new level. They're like all these different kinds of terpenes out there in weed, and they're trying to find the different ones and like the rare ones that really fucking set shit different, like really make something stand out. And that's where you get a lot of flavors. All that shit comes into play with your terpenes, And um, I, that's about as much as I know. I haven't really gotten into where I fucked with anything of my plants and been able to do anything with I, whenever I grew. Um, but I do know that, yeah, someone said that because that's what I would do. I, I used to go in there and be like, let me get an indica, let me get a sativa, let me get a hybrid, and let me get a bunch of wax. <laughs> and then I'd like mail it to myself. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, my thing, uh, I just like smoking weed, watching movies. Like it's socializing on weed is fine and all, but like, it's just, it's more of a, I need to relax after I had a hard day. Yeah. Smoking weed is not a, uh, they, they, a lot of people say, well, I guess it can be recreational if you're not a pothead and you don't get high very often. So it's definitely, it gets you, it can alter your, 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 you, you can really get twacked out on weed if you don't ever smoke it. And then you, that's how I used to hate my friends that would get my, my, like, other friends didn't smoke weed very much, and then they would want to get high or try it finally, and then they'd, like, bong rip some blunts. It's like, no, 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 no. Take this little hitty, this little batty right here. Hit that once. Enjoy. And then don't hit it no more. Just hit that shit once. If you need more, I, I got you. Just And try it out. Don't, don't fucking freak yourself out. Yeah, I don't. In high school, people would be like, "Dude, we got seventy dollars. That means we can fucking smoke a quarter tonight." And I'm like, well, "No, yeah, that's no. it's a waste. It's too much. It's old Billy Bong right here will get the job done. All right, like Billy Bob here. She, he, whatever. It's a it's a signature Marley piece. But uh, yeah, that I guarantee you, you pack that full once, which is only gonna be like a quarter of a gram, maybe a little bit more." finish it <laughs> and then if that's the case i'll just put a couple dab drops on it don't spend all you know that's just just a couple dab drops <laughs> dabs those i was stuck on dabs for a long time it was real big where i was from before it got big out here like when i first moved out here dabs wasn't a thing it took like a year or two to get really popular but 
I could go on about we like my Cheech and Chong thing I just got in the mail. It's actually signed by Cheech and Chong. Oh really? Yeah. That's awesome. I've yeah. never seen anything they've ever done. No. No, I've watched Tommy Chong on that seventy show, but that's it. Yeah, yeah. They're uh you may you may or may not like it. it just depends on if you're into uh if you're into older movies, definitely a good cl- comedy class. It's a it's it's one of the ones. You know, it's one of those classic four twenty movies. My four twenty movies it has a Cheech and Chong in it, but it's usually How High with Method Man and Red Man. <laughs> that is my shit. That shit is so funny. That's one of my favorite ones. And Half Baked. Have you seen any of those? No, I need to see Half Baked. I've seen everything Chappelle's done, but not Half Baked. Oh, yeah, that's his. They wrote that movie like overnight, too. Like when they did that. <laughs> that's nuts. I do. Neil Brennan is such a good comedian. Uh, his three mic special is one of the better ones I've seen in a long time. Yeah, they haven't really been putting out big good specials lately. That's it's the one thing I think Netflix has really hurt comedy in a way by letting just any any ethic person do a fucking a comedy special, not or white person because there's a lot of bad white persons. But let's be honest, it took a long time for Andrew Soltz, which is a beast you know to even get on netflix and there's a certain comedians out there that, sh- that deserve it and just because they're white straight males it, it was not the time to put them up there during this this whole thing and i get it but some of these people that i think only had like 30 minutes and they stretched out an hour with some bullshit <laughs> it's like yeah i don't know why anyone would shoot a special without the hour though like if regardless of the circumstances if you don't have the material don't do the hour i it's weird telling people i can do uh longer spots than i can actually do yeah i could sit there and i could do 20 30 minutes if i got crowd like i had the other night you know that just laughed and laughed and laughed and i literally only got four jokes in at that one competition four one-liners is all i was able to get in between some of the crowd work and how great they laughed and, and it just worked out that's really good. That's like the really good shit about the one liners is like Justin, like he has said he has to write like 180 jokes and then he can do his hour. But like if you're going to be doing joke tag, 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 you're going to need so many more punchlines. And oh, yeah, that's a I was just started on that last night. I pulled together all my jokes that I've had because I've got a whole I'm getting up there as far as like I don't have 180. That's for sure. But I've actually been pulling out together all my clean ones that, or all the ones I can make clean. And I've got probably a good five or ten minutes that I can do clean. If it's a good crowd, I for sure got ten. Um, but that's good. Maybe deal. eight. Maybe eight. <laughs> Solid eight for sure. And clean. But it's all, to me, they're just dad jokes. Clean comedy, dad jokes. But I was just talking about that with Joe the Animal. There's different versions of clean comedy. There's like kid clean and then there's just clean where people that's an adult that can handle a you know real topics but they just don't want to hear fuck shit and all this you know abortion jokes and all those incest jokes and 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 the shock shit they want to you can still talk about legitimate real life topics um just got to make them funny and you, you they just can't be those real dark corners of comedy that a lot of comedians go just for a reaction. I'm yeah. one, I'm on a perfect example. I'll go to a dark corner real quick, especially if someone's fucking talking while I'm fucking doing a shit in the middle of my set and they're just somebody in front talking, blah, blah, blah. I'll do the worst fucking most offensive joke I've got just to see if they catch their, catch them to shut the fuck up. I get that. I realized early on that I didn't like upsetting people with comedy, so I didn't want to use it to be mean. Uh, but I will burn a room. <laughs> uh, it is. I, I tried to burn a room one time, and it ended up working in my favor. <laughs> so, and they ended up really liking me by the end of it. Uh, That's how some of them are. They like they just want to be part of the show. Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of crowd work. I I had some girl fucking curl over. It was such a good feeling. I listened back to the track too, and I was just like, "God damn, I was quick on my feet right there." <laughs> yeah, yeah, those nights are nice when you're just, just on it. All all cylinders are firing perfect. I was I was on a roll there from that Mason shitty city show. Um, I was doing the 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 urban clubs, and I was just killing it there for a good couple of weeks. And then this last one at Tonerios, it was a bomb. Like 
Nashville Christmas morning bomb. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, it was rough. Dude, it hurts coming down from that high. It fucking, I just came down from my ego high. Yeah. I so. just keep telling myself, I was like, so did everybody else bomb too. <laughs> you know? it yeah. like, no, it, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. But I also do tell myself, I was like, when I start bombing, if, if I start bombing or if it's just automatically a bad crowd or just not, I'm just not doing well. I'll, I'll turn over my little piece of paper I got and use all the new stuff that I was planning on trying if I could figure a way to work it in. Then I'll just go to all new stuff. I'll be like, all right, fuck it, I'm already bombing. Let me at least see if, if if I'm bombing and I can tell these jokes while bombing and they get a laugh of any kind of sort, I know there's something there. And uh, I think that was a big thing. I think I was thinking of the other night. I was like, you know, comedians should do... If you want to test a joke, best way to test a joke, go up there and tell it as a one-liner in just a drop. No emotion, no nothing. Just tell the joke. If the joke is funny, it'll get laughs. And then you can act it out and, and add your story to it and just to make it 100 times better. Because storytellers are probably the best comedians in my point of view because everyone loves a good storyteller. Everyone loves a good story and everyone loves a good storyteller. Uh, I... I enjoy like the Burt Kreischers and them, but I really gravitate towards like Sam Morrill, Mike Vecchione, where it's just like tight fucking tags and it's just, it's something so good. Yeah. I don't know why, but that is what I love. Uh, I like extreme comedy too, like those Sam Kennison and Anthony Jesse, uh, Anthony Jeselnik. He's kind of on that, I guess he is a one liner through and through. One yeah, I think yeah, he's the fucking rock star of that sub Stephen Wright's still alive. <laughs> like we're not gonna give Stephen Wright up. He's the best of the best king, the king of one liners in my eyes. Besides Henny Youngman, he was the godfather of them. Well, yeah, but let's look at it. Jessen Lick uh, has four hours out. Uh, he's a lot sexier than uh, Stephen Wright. Uh, more confident, you can sell him better. I think Jessen Lick will get remembered as one liners over Stephen Wright. Uh, no, just, just, Stephen Wright is, is just so much more intelligent. Maybe Jessel Nick will get there, but there's jokes that Stephen Wright does that's just like, how the fuck did you put that together? What was one of my favorites? I think is uh, took my girlfriend out to get a, a camping trip. She got poison ivy on the brain. You know, crazy, right? <laughs> So now she has to think of sandpaper anytime she wants to scratch it. <laughs> and I'm just like that, I'm sure I just hacked it the fuck up. But if the way he did it is great, <laughs> he, he comes out with that guitar and does that. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, I, I love it. Uh, but you know, Jesselnick, he's more dirty. I like his dirty because I'm I love dark comedy and and and, and on the edge. Like Daniel Daniel Tosh, I think is a should be up there with some of the i'm sorry his shit all of his stand-ups are good and his comedy show that he did there that that uh what's his name rob Deerdick pretty much stole dude yeah they i did you ever see the episode where they made fun of rob durham or not fucking rob durham <laughs> sorry sorry rob uh rob Deerdick. uh-uh uh they uh had some skateboarder on for a web redemption and they did a uh fantasy factory parody and it was just rob dyrdek is just like molesting these children <laughs> and they're in a cult and it it was fucking hilarious i i loved tosh porno as a kid binged watched it <laughs> yeah, i remember when that came out i was like man i really like this guy so i would listen to him on uh spotify or, or um, pandora back in the day and he was just, he just killed it like anybody that can do a good abortion joke is uh <laughs> you know <laughs> If you do an abortion joke, it's got to be good. And it's got to be good out of the gate. You can't polish them up. <laughs> like, they're hard to polish up. Like Because my first set had abortion jokes in it. And it's just now polished up. And I offended Alex Blodgix's old lady first. Uh, my first set, she was not happy with me because I did it. And it's good now. It's, uh, what is it, uh, 1.4 women a year die while having an abortion. So I guess there's a midget in there somewhere, but <laughs> you know, the point four. But but my wife got real worried, you know, if to ever get an abortion now, which I keep telling her, 
I'm not that lucky. Don't worry. I can't kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> no, that's a good joke. I, don't know. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would get offended by that. Yeah, she didn't like it. Um, and then I did went into like the, uh, but there was also, it was a lot of abortion jokes. It was that. And then, you know, how much do they charge for abortions? Or no, how much do they charge for twin baby abortions versus solo baby abortions? Is it like an extra vacuum bag tax or is it a BOGO? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I wonder how they do that, actually. I... <laughs> exactly. And then I hit them with the abortionists are just really bad pediatricians. Still in the act now, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's where my go to. <laughs> Mine, so uh, my mom came out to the show I did on Saturday and I close on uh, that big tits joke that I have. Mm -hmm. Like people, I like my, I was like, people tell me I look a lot like my mom. So when I get older, I'm going to have huge tits. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom came up to introduce herself to Mary Jane after. And she said, hi, I'm Andrew's mom. And Mary Jane was like, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's quick, man. She's, she's good. She's good. I tried to get her to come on, but she's so busy with her podcast and all the shows that she's fucking on. I didn't know she had a podcast. Yeah, she does. A, she does shit with the STL live. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was looking at getting involved with that, but yeah. I just never took the leap. Yeah, I just decided to do it all on my kind of own. I want to build this. This is going to be much more of a uh, a studio like this area, but I've got that whole two-story uh, garage out there that I was going to, me and Radcliffe are going to kind of turn into like a set where we could like set it up easily flip walls to change the scenario scene and everything like that and basically make it like a set into where we could do sketches and stuff yeah and i would like to kind of find my comedic voice a little bit more before i would have to join something like that it, i think it's great to collaborate yeah and definitely do it but yeah before you join something where it's like we have i gotta live up to some kind of standard or practice i can't yeah you know? i just can't see that it's a big group and i don't know i'm just working with that many people that they, they, they it's usually a pretty big group of people i always see in the credits mike ratcliffe worked with them for a while he's done a few sketches with them i believe yeah is, i think ron finger is still involved with them mm -hmm. ron so. does some good stuff with them god they have a. Uh... He makes up like some fake kind of like hippie voodoo stuff for uh, curing someone's problems, like medical problems. It's a really funny sketch. <laughs> so when did you, uh, how do you, how, what, I guess we'll jump into that one. How do you, you're, you're pretty good at writing jokes to roast people. What's your, what's your technique? What are you doing? What's your writing? You got a, a structure to your writing plans? Uh, for roast or just for? Yeah, to roast. We'll start with the roast because that's what you want at. So for roasting, I, it's just like writing a joke, but I already have my perspective put down, which is be mean. So then I can just go through and be like, okay, this is a thing about like, the, here's a flaw, here's a flaw, here's a flaw, here's something weird they do. And you just build a misdirect around it. Okay. Yeah. A lot of your stuff was misdirect. That, still that good. It was a good joke. It was a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> that hang ten. What about uh, a lot of the, uh, I've said, I've asked, I always do, it's um, comedians figure, you can start seeing it click. You're one of them, I'm one of them. Dormeyer's one of them. Um, you start seeing, so that from our first open mic to now, it's, it's gotten a little bit easier, would you say? Yes, to write a joke, yeah. Uh, yeah, what was it that helped you get over that little, that first fucking writing jokes <laughs> yeah it, learning what writing jokes you know, yeah yeah i you sit down and you write until you figure out uh, you i you like kind of started to notice a pattern in my setups to my punch lines which i mean i don't have like a lot of material right now but like i i've noticed patterns of how i'm like setting it which usually i'm like agitated at something or i am uh you said something stupid i'm gonna make fun of that that's kind of where I've been writing my jokes the most easy, easily. Yeah. So that's you, that's what I'm working with right now. Have you checked out any of the way Kuvar does his, like that Jerry Corley kind of word association style? Yeah, I can't. I can't exactly do that. I can. Uh, I, it just doesn't hit right with me. I don't know why, yeah, but I yeah. Come up, I come up with really dumb jokes. <laughs> like it's kinda, shit's got to like. 
today I came up one actually on the way to the gas station before I met up with you was uh, my mother-in-law actually called me and she's like I was just checking in with you because someone just called me from the county jail and I couldn't hear the name <laughs> I was like well I'm glad that you thought of me <laughs> So I was like, there's something there. There's legs there. That's when I, that's my writing. Um, and I do that three, four, five times a day, and I always write it down. And then I go back to that later on, and then I write on those. I'll, I've tried association, too. It does help to write. Uh, I do it once I've got the bulk of the, 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 the joke down, and I want to um, get into, like, some sub-tag shit. Like, then I, then I will. Nick's actually tagged up a couple of my jokes. He always hits me up after watching the podcast. He's like, you know that joke you were said you've been working on? <laughs> He's like, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, you motherfucker. I've had that one in my head for like a year. I've been working on that, trying to figure that out. Dad, dude, he always has a tag. It's great. I um, yeah, He's really good to uh, work stuff out with occasionally. So. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm sitting on a couple premises right now where it's just like I I believe in my heart there's something there, but sometimes you'll never figure it out. And come, like my hokey pokey joke that I've recently been doing, it's it just came. Like I, I had hokey pokey down in my very first joke book. Like I had the joke was that I tried a couple times and never landed was you should never hold a baby and do the hokey pokey. Like, that was the joke, and it was just like – never really hit the way I thought it would hit because I knew there was something there, but it just wasn't there yet. And then once I added in the cousin arrested for child abuse, because I told her not to try to teach it how to dance the hokey pokey so soon, so young. And then, you know... You made it personal? Yeah, and I was like... But then after an investigation, we found out it wasn't abuse. It was just the baby had Parkinson's, which explains why I was so good at the hokey pokey. <laughs> I just shook it all about. I, I I do a joke where I make fun of uh, pregnant high school girls. Sometimes it gets a soft reaction. Sometimes it doesn't. But uh, Kuvi was like, hey, say it was your sister who was the pregnant one. So I throw my sister under the bus of just being some whore. And then I, the joke works now. Yeah. So it's very fun. Yeah, I did a, uh, I did a joke about my sister once and I didn't realize how how personal it was and until she's like, I didn't, my old lady had to tell me that my, my sister didn't like something I did. And she was too afraid to tell me about it. She thought I was a big asshole. I was like, Oh, switching in the person is nothing. Like with my comedy, it's not that much. Cause I pull all the other bullshit out. I write as a storyteller because that's how I first started out as comedy. Like the first six months I was doing storytelling comedy. It wasn't working for me so well. Um, yeah. I'm one of my goals in comedy is to uh, humiliate a uh, a man I grew up with on a on a on a platform and for people. <laughs> so that it's one of my goals. Uh, well, you're gonna have to get him famous on the platform before you can really roast him in front of a bunch of people on that platform. Nah, it, it would be like a character and something. Uh-huh. It would. I want him to know it's him uh-huh. when the time <laughs> comes. That's a good one. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blodgett has one like that where he does a little joke but not a sketch uh, where he does that we never forget Kyle yes. <laughs> uh, he's he. I like Blodgett what do you think of Blodgett oh piece of shit Blodgett what, of you run a podcast you think I'm gonna <laughs> talk shit on Blodgett uh, no, I Blodgett's just, good. He writes like a motherfucker. I know. I was at his first set and I was like, holy shit. I seen him his first time up. He almost choked. And then like, he's oh, already balls. nervous. <laughs> he's already nervous, you know, kind of that, that, that nerve thing that he has. And he just played into it so well with his comedy. I was like, this guy, first time, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> There's the bar. <laughs> but, um. So that's your your comedy writing. Uh, what's the best piece of advice you've had given to you? You've worked with some a couple of guys now. You've done some shows. You've gotten a couple under your belt with a couple of the other guy, older guys. Um, I'll, I'll give you a few. Um, I actually spoke to J.C. Sabala last night, and he told me um good thing of advice was uh, control what you can uh, and be prepared for the things you can't control. So just like when the time comes, have your type five ready, pull it out of your back pocket to crush with. 
That's so that's what he told me. And then uh, Nate Bargatze on a podcast just said, uh, "Be obsessed with it and be hanging out and just get comfortable in the scene." Yeah, I agree with that to a point. I just gotta work. I can't. <laughs> I I miss out on a lot of stuff that that happens after the shows and hanging out and, and being part of it and getting comfortable with everybody. That's why I kind of do this is because the people that I like and want to have on, but I can't have a. It's hard to have an in depth conversation or or really hang out with anybody when you're at a show or a mic because each one of us are preparing for our set or something like that. So it's kind of hard to have a, a intelligent conversation with somebody with all these other people around. And so this is kind of what this has turned into. I, I enjoy, I'm not as, I, I may have resting bitch face. I've, I've made a come <laughs> terms with that. I might not be the nicest person. Somebody told me that they're like, you don't look like you're a very happy person to approach, not very approachable I was like, well, that's not what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's not nice. Yeah, because then you hear about you and John Maddie. Oh, he's such a nice guy. I like him. Well, you don't like me? <laughs> <laughs> no. Luckily, I'm not too insecure because I was the only white kid growing up, and I got roasted regularly. <laughs> <laughs> no rhythm, can't jump. Uh, we are the f- we we are the reasoning for all evil. <laughs> like, have you ever gone to the Word Up mo- open mics ever? No, I've not. Hey, you're missing out on that. I know I am. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't even really sign up on Funny Bone for Tuesdays anymore because I'd rather just go to that one. And if I can get on on a Sunday at Funny Bone, cool. Um, really? Yeah, better crowd every time. Of ne- they they. Uh, I can compare every show I've ever done at Funny Bone, and you can probably add the sh- two. You you can probably combine shows, and they still. I've been at that place multiple times that they have to refuse people to come in, especially since COVID. That's pretty good. That's yeah, sick. And they, uh, it's no, it's no room that's easy. Like you gotta, you, they are on. You're gonna learn if your shit's funny or not. You're gonna know. Like, it's really helped a lot, grow a lot, actually changing having to change things up it's crazy watching some of these guys that you see at the funny bone that murder they come in there and don't murder because they tried try to bring some some weak shit but then they come back like the next week or two like i think there's a couple comedians i see come and do it and uh they didn't do so hot the first time up and then they changed some shit around and then I killed it. Well, yeah, it's just working different rooms. That's yeah. so. I went to uh, the mic last night. Which one? Uh, oh, fucking some blue strawberry. Did you? I've been wanting to go to that. I was going to, but Sundays is like the wife's day. <laughs> I get yeah. So I get there around nine o'clock. Uh, I'm still hanging out around midnight. They say, "Hey, we're gonna end the show." So I hang out for three hours at a fucking karaoke mic to not even get a set, which I have not done. Um, I guess it's alt room, I guess, because it's, it's, it's in the Central West End. So I was going to have to bring some more uh, clean material to the table. Wait, there's another open mic somewhere? What, the one at uh, Blue Strawberry? Oh, is that the, is that the alt room? Yeah, I, that's, I was uh, talking. I was like, that's what I would classify it as. Oh, uh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the uh, Word Up is a, a mixed, they do some poet, they, they, they got a lot of spoken word. Um, um, every now and again, a musician and some rappers. But a lot of comedians, it's like, it's where you're gonna, it's where you probably catch like Marquise Moore, Tonario, um, Tommy Dangerfield. All those guys are pretty go to that. Um, Hamid, all them, all of the black guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sugarcoat it too much. Well, no, Laura <laughs> Peterson's always out there. She's one of the ones. Uh, Jake Pellick, he's always there too. That dude's fucking everywhere. <laughs> he, he he's probably in your kitchen right now. You have no idea. <laughs> I had him over. He was fun. He uh, he 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 went down the conspiracy trail with me for a while. <laughs> That's definitely a man into conspiracies. Yeah, yeah. He's just not. Uh, yeah, no. He had some good ones to look up. Uh, I usually ask, uh, what's what's one of yours? What's your favorite or most intriguing conspiracy you've ever come across? Like that's interested you now, back in the day, whenever. I think, I think I forget who it was. Somebody hit me up with it. Actually, Ratcliffe told me about Wall Street bets like three months before that fucking popped. And we have it on the episode. Like his very first episode, he's talking to me about it and shit when I asked him this question. Isn't he, uh, was he the first episode? Uh, no, 
I think Baron or yeah, Nate Baron was the first one. Okay. Uh, I am very interested in the assassination of prolific uh, people and a lot of the experiments that they ran on us. I would say that is very interesting. Also, sex trafficking is up there. Yeah, that one's a that was a deep one to get into. I would so I know a story of a man who uh said he was like, I'm gonna go away for a couple of weeks, I'm gonna work on this piece uh about nine eleven and he shows up three weeks later and he had drove into a tree and he was dead. What story is this? Uh I do not have any of that information. <laughs> I listen, my conspiracy thing really started when uh, I got into Tim Dillon last summer and I oh, Tim listened Dillon's to great. Yeah. Dude, have you listened to his backlog? Uh what's his backlog? Uh it's like his uh stuff from like when he was still with Gas Digital uh-huh. before he went independent. Dude, he him and Ray Kump go down wild conspiracy holes and Yeah, cuz he was he's a big Alex Jones. I used to avidly follow alex jones because alex jones really did he's the one that first exposed and, and filmed what was going on in the bohemian grove with the whole moloch uh god uh, uh mock sacrifice that they do there as like the ceremony where they sacrifice a virgin girl and it's all a mock but like in a play supposedly but it's really weird and and, and super secret and he got a lot of backlash for sneaking in there videotaping it but. Oh, I have seen that tape actually. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, what do you think about um, Egypt? Do you- uh, d- you're just you're giving me a boner. Like that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the one. That's what started my conspiracy. Like I love Graham Hancock. I think I've read two of the books now. Um, the Chariots of the Gods. I think it was one of them, or something like that. And the other is. The one that, uh, the supernatural of some sort. They're audio books, so I listen to them. But, uh, do you ever fuck with Graham Hancock? No, nah, no. Nah. Okay, he was on Joe Rogan with, uh, Randall Carlson. These guys, uh, Randall Carlson's a, a, a PhD geologist and astronomer or meteorite astrologer or some crazy shit like that. And then Graham Hancock has the theory that there was an ancient civilization before that, that was forgotten about and destroyed. And we were just repeating that because there was a some uh, a cataclysm that took out so much of mankind that we weren't able to take. St- if we got taken out today by a big asteroid or meteorite or whatever, if enough humans got killed, it, more than likely there isn't enough. We don't have enough information to be able to pass on to continue the technological advances we have we'd be set back years after that last generation died and and if it did was a big asteroid probably throw our planet into another gnarly ice age making glaciers because what happened is our land got crushed it like that's why we have mountains and all these crazy valleys and everything is ice big huge mile high ice fucking uh walls of ice can come, come over our land and just like formed it just crushed it and, and pulverized everything into it and that's why we find a lot of oops arts as they call them uh out of place artifacts and they found a lot of them in um egypt egypt is like uh khufu the great pyramid of giza uh they vandalized it by spray paint or painting Kofu's name on it and graffiti and they used the wrong fucking spelling of it out of a book that someone had used that was wrong so the date that they have is all wrong and it's been debunked but they just won't debunk it fully like they won't say oh yeah that's it they keep saying it's the the Kofu Kofu's fucking tomb but it's not they never found anything with Kofu in it nothing but this the one archaeologist that said that it was Khufu's that was, you know, got to dig in it, was losing out on a lot of money and it was pissing a lot of people off and wasn't going to, needed to be funded for other shit. So he went in there and painted Khufu's name out of a, a book that he was known to read. Where the fuck are these ladybugs coming from, man? I don't know. I don't think you have the place patched up enough. Ah, must my old lady might have a door open actually, or a window or something. But oh, well. I don't know, man. Egypt. It's weird. They're smarter than we believe. I 
that's for sure. I don't know about a whole civilization like we have before. They definitely were. We're probably the most advanced beings on this planet by yeah, well, we figured out how to actually lift the, the monolithic stones to a point. Like, the, there's a man, fuck, he's like Kentucky or something. He figured out how to move, uh, spin, and lift a couple hundred ton blocks by himself. He made his own Stonehenge by all manpower. It's all weight and levers. It's just like he gets a big one. Like if he needs something um, to, to to he'd get a little rock he'd ha- he'd build something that would like go over it with a handle that stuck off to where he could just get the thing to tip and he'd put a stone under there to where it would make it wobble and then he'd have this handle thing and he could sh- 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 shimmy it and then what he would do is get it to where he was able he would take shims beat shims under it to lift one side up get a board and put it under there. And then he'd get another board that go in the middle, and he would just use weights. He'd walk to one side, and he'd take the shims out and walk to one side, boom, get the board under there, walk to the next side uh, underneath the middle, and he would build it up that way. And he built his own Stonehenge that way. Stonehenge is the the circle formation of rocks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's the Easter Island ones that... Uh, the uh, the Eastern Island... island um, is it heads. Eastern? Easter. Easter. Okay, yeah, I've Easter. been saying... I've been saying Easter my whole life, so yeah, I, I hope that was Easter. right. Yeah, Easter. Uh, yeah, the um, I forget the the what their their name is, but the the big heads, the bodies, they're actually buried bodies that are like way down into the ground. Like, oh, so probably a genocide thing. Well, no, no, no. The head, like it's just these big, huge, um, like they thought they were heads. They thought they were just the heads of them, the stones. They thought it was just big stones with heads, but they found out they had like arms. They dug down. Oh, dead ass, really? Yeah, yeah. They had like it was full body statues, and they're huge. Uh, the most most recent one with the biggest that's changing everything is Glebeke Tepe, and that's the one that it's, made up. it's in uh, Turkey that they found, and it's older than the pyramids. And it's it basically the the dating that they're getting is for one the whole the whole thing is crazy because it's this big hill and what they found is some some civilization that's supposedly at the time of only hunter gatherers still no civilizations no farming they just followed the herds and and hunted and they they didn't have like communities yet. That's a, a whole other. That's another step in our evolution, basically. And these people were building these uh, astronomically correct and aligned true north and south uh, structures, huge monolith structures. But the thing is, is they would bury them. It seems like every couple hundred years, they would bury the site and build a new one that kind of replicated it. And you would think that the technology would get better as they got you know each a couple every couple hundred years that but no there was more intricate fucking carvings and and stonework and 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 more precise alignments with stars the further down they got to the older the older they got which you would think would be opposite so and it's real crazy especially and on top of the fact that there is the the undeniable shit with the Sphinx in Egypt, like the water erosion on Sphinx, they've taken pictures and gone to like the top of the best specialist and erosion specialist in the world and just shown pictures of the erosion on the Sphinx. They didn't say it was the Sphinx, they didn't show it was just a picture of like all the water grooves and stuff. And they was like, oh yeah, that's like 100,000 years worth of, of erosion or blah, blah, blah. And it's, way back to when yeah the sphinx they're they're talking a lot older and there's a lot more to the sphinx that people don't know about like there's a there was a bunch of pictures taken and drawn of people coming in and out of the head there with the ladders inside the head there's a uh there was a hole at one point that you can access there's a chamber underneath it that they found with like x-ray sonar vision shit that they do and there's a couple chambers that have, there's a legend that that's like the hall of records of human m- mankind, like what, what Alexandria's library had. There's a bunch of uh, 
knowledge, all man's knowledge or something. And they won't let you go down there. They will not uh, dig to get into the chain verse as far as I know. Why? <clears throat> it sounds like there's great stuff in there. Yeah. They've also, there's a water underneath the great pyramid. There's like a whole lake underneath the pyramid of Giza. And that's why they think it's a power plant more than anything because of the tide and the way it comes in and all the fucking courts and everything they have in there. And the way that it's designed, they could definitely pulse energy. And when you're really looking to Nikola Tesla's fucking shit, it really kind of starts matching up. And now definitely when we've learned about particles that are even smaller than atoms, they're like tetrahydroton. They're like these triangles that are like yeah, quartz. 4D, like triangular, symmetric things. It's like the smallest particle we found so far that we can see and have discovered. And they're really weird. They're, it's proven that there's more than one dimension or galaxy. Like they can be in two dimensions at one time. and Quantum realm? Yeah, like what we can only comprehend and understand, I think, up to 4D. But then there's... 8D, and then there's certain physicists and theorists that say there's a 10D realm of like we can't even comprehend with our brain of what it would be, but we can draw out, I think, up to 4D, and uh, I, some can explain and comprehend what 8D would be. And these are all different dimensions that other beings could live in, and, you know, because a, a 1D world. It, the reaction of what happens in a 1D world will affect the second D world, which will affect the third world. Anything that's done in each one, you can affect the other one, but the other one can't affect you first. Like it has to, it's really weird the way they explain it. I, I really get into the geeky fucking science alert shit. Like I always read the, uh, the new shit that comes out on science. Facebook used to really give me all the details, but they've cut off all the new shit. <laughs> For some reason, I it would just get science. Uh, news updates all the time every morning that was what I read in the morning like they done uh, they transferred um, information long distances within like quantum seconds using quantum physics like a quantum laser of some sort like they transferred in information as if uh, email think of an email all the wires and everything it takes to send an email they did it with light beams basically quantum physics like uh, yeah that's for the next the next because right now we're tapped out on technology as far as chips from what i believe as far as how much we can put on a microchip before it's no longer a microchip um but yeah that's the only thing that's making computers better is this the more that they can put on these chips and these the more powerful the smaller the chip can perform the better but they're getting to a point now where they can't even build some of these chips without robot, robots doing it because it's so small. And uh, the next big one is quantum physics. And China supposedly claimed supremacy on it, which is scary because everything we have is done by firewalls with the encryption system we use, like banking, nuclear, fucking codes, all that. And quantum physics can hack it in a minute. If you, t if you program it to do it, it can because... It just it has, especially if you get up to a certain amount of power, they do it instead of like gigabytes of RAM. It's called qubits. And if you can get up to like, I think it's 38 qubits of power, you have the computing power of all particles on Earth. Like you can, uh, uh, you, you can run a problem, like a super computer that we have today. You can give it a math problem that it can take 10 years to try to figure out. It would take, because it has to go through every single uh, option that it has until it can find the most efficient correct way of doing something a quantum physics computer can do that problem but it can break it up into if you have 30 or if you have one qubit it can do it twice if you have two now you got it to the second power and then the third power into the fourth power so four times you know whatever that is and once you get to about 38 you, you're up to these to so much computing power that it can crack and hack anything because instead of it if uh let's say you're a hacker and you're trying to hack a, a bank code or a, a nuclear code these nuke codes they, they change every fucking you know 10 minutes 
what it would take you and a million other hackers to try to hack those co that code and try to put in as many options as you can until you are able to crack it. And that means putting in every op every digital option that you can. How many times are you going to be able to do that in 10 minutes, even with your million-plus hacker army? Fucking, and I could probably many, put up two, two, three. Yeah, and how many options, how many numbers is out there, and how many variables and how many different combinations could there be of that code? Well, that quantum physics computer can do all that in one. One try, boom, it's done. It can do what these supercomputers take 100 years, takes them a week. Like that's how fast and it's going to change. It will change everything. I'm very excited for technology goes. I've heard that we'll be able to upload our brains onto computers very soon. Very excited for that. I would love to live forever. Well, Israel's uh, research uh, team come out recently with some um, uh, research that they tested uh, like 60 70 patients of like these 60 year olds or seven and 70 year olds and they were trying this new uh high or it's pure oxygen in a high uh pressured chamber like you're in a chamber with this high oxygen and some something else but it it, it not only kept the telomeres of your chromosomes which causes aging they get shorter and shorter and they it causes them to produce uh, mutated cells and not fight off mutated cells it kind of lowers your immune system in old, old age and uh, those start getting shorter and shorter and that's what causes old age well they've learned how to not just stop them from getting shorter but how to grow them back and reverse aging and that's the second group. There's another group in uh, Australia, but I think they have a different system of how they're doing the reverse aging, another theory, which means you can just combine the two and get be in the prime. Oh, do, it, did you uh, hear about the dude who was going to do the head transplant? Mm -mm. Uh, so this was a doctor who he was going to he worked on this for years, but he was going to do a real human head transplant, new body all that. So he was taking a man who had a uh, ALS, I think. And he uh, was, they were going to do it. They kept pushing the surgery back. They had to do it in Vietnam. It was the only country that would let them do it, but he did it on a bunch of rats and mice. And he had a couple successful head transplants on mice and rats, but uh, there would always be things like they're paralyzed. Mm. Uh, sometimes he get it where it was just the back legs paralyzed, but I believe the surgery never happened because uh it is probably very impossible with our technology to do a human head i don't know we um I, people say that but the since we've figured out microchips and, and the computers and gotten that the american government every year that we technologically advance they technologically have advanced six years and they are we're we we are so far behind what they allow us to have. We cloned a sheep in the early 90s. It just died from old age not too long ago. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, that shit's insane. We cloned a sheep. We cloned a sheep. We can clone a human. There was just a doctor in China, I mean, a Chinese doctor that got a geneticist that uh, manipulated the human genetic code by uh, making it not susceptible to HIV virus because his friends wanted to have babies and one of them carried the HIV virus. So he manipulated the genes with a tool called CRISPR. It's a new genetic tool that they've been using that's making a lot of headway. Well, I there's a lot of philosophical and ethical things about cloning humans, though. And clone a sheep, who gives a fuck? But to have a copy of me uh, that's like what, 20 years younger than me, that's very... It's just uh, a back. Have you seen the movie The Island? No. It's like there's a there's this island of all these people and they live in this really weird system. They they're perfectly healthy. They're only allowed like they're they're like tested every day. And basically it's just rich people's replicas for in case they need a new kidney or something ever happens to them and they have spare body. Yeah, no, that's a really fucked up thing to do cuz I mean you're going to birth a I mean I would be me and I know how I feel if I was a farm an organ farm yeah but i guess there's that that's to the extreme if they were to even bring them into life you could always just keep them on a in a coma like 
state you don't even have to i guess you wouldn't if you're just there to harvest body parts what do they need that you can grow the body and everything without what it you'd be surprised what they can do they grow meat now there's like plenty of companies out there that are growing meat because they just need tissue a little petri dish and they can clone that shit and then it help with food shortages all over the world too well, I mean, to be fair, you know how much food gets thrown away every day? In America, yes. It's, fuck, I, do, I'll, I threw away four bananas today. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got pizza in the fridge that's probably need to be thrown away. Yeah, so. So, yeah, I there's definitely a problem with getting food to people, but I fucking, I will never eat uh, meat grown in a, a Petri dish for sure. I'll try it. Uh, fuck. I'll fucking snap a cow's neck myself <laughs> before I eat that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've, uh, I'm, it's not an issue now, but I mean, it is an issue now. I don't think it should be an issue. I think, uh, and where we're at today, especially being 2021, technologically advanced societies that we're in, there should no be re- no reason that any human goes hungry or or cold or or doesn't have a roof over its head or clean water there's no reason for that with the we spend close to a trillion dollars a year now on of that we know of usually the every couple of years like recently it's now the pentagon's up to like 26 trillion dollars that it can't account for so on top of the trillion we've been giving them every year so that's just to put research and and to build shit to kill other humans. That's it. That's all it is. Just to kill other humans. That's all that money goes towards instead of what we really could be doing. Like when we seen that Fukushima shit happen, that nuclear meltdown from a tsunami or earthquake, there was people there for days stuck in radioactive shit. Why the fuck didn't every country just be like, oh shit, we need to go get this cleaned up real quick, you know? There should have been issues with get, with traffic jams of all the countries sending help to get these people, you know, to clean up the oceans and everything. It shouldn't be like us watching it on TV. It should have just been like a scene, uh, us going to get, we, there's no reason we have the neat means. We have the helicopters, we got the jets, we got everything we need to fucking make sure that there is no, it, when natural catastrophes happen, it should we we can technologically and we have the ability with ease to minimize as much suffering and death and and loss as possible we can get there quickly if we wanted to if it had something to do you know they can get missiles across the planet fucking i uh i didn't know you were such a liberal that's a in a way but i still have my guns yeah no it's <laughs> i still got my property you know yeah, man, we definitely don't do enough to help people, but, like, I, what am I going to do? Go fucking burn a, a Starbucks down until they start feeding hungry people? No, I, I don't. I, I'll i mention it. I, 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 I piss some guys off at work sometimes because they talk about politics, and I just point out both sides. I was like, you guys realize that both sides are assholes. <laughs> we argue about who's the less of the criminal. Come on. Is that the game we want to be playing? Yeah. Is this where we want to be when Jesus comes back? Dude, if anyone brings up politics and I'm around now, I'll just dip. I have had no... Uh, after that last year that we just had with politics, I am over it for a minute. Yeah. Politics have never... It's a... Yeah, but that's when, the, you know, that's that, that's when they get away with all the shit. Like, right now, they're attacking the fucking creating bills to basically make it impossible to create to have a third party because the third party option is becoming so popular and so many people are you know a people's party yeah that seems very weird i don't like the idea of them uh banning a third party yeah that but i i can't stop them yeah. it's I just like can't they, stop they, them. they rig the primaries they, the dnc is coming they're a private company they can do what they want they don't have to answer to laws it's like the the federal reserve not being actual uh, a government it's not a government entity it's a it's it's private company owned by private shareholders it is not a, a our federal the american federal reserve it has no. It isn't Amer. It has nothing to do with America. It's not controlled by the government. The government has no control over the Federal Reserve. They do not answer to anybody. And any time that America's government has tried to check them and put them in place, they've told us pretty much, keep it up. 
we'll drop fucking bricks down on your head. Yeah, we need to fucking uh, shoot some politicians. Uh, we need to abolish the Federal Reserve. It was the, the, the reason that they caused the economic turbulence, and they've been behind the fucking uh, every war since their creation. The whole reason of their creation, which was illegal in 1913 by Woodrow Wilson, they signed it over December 24th at night while everyone was gone at home with, uh, for Christmas. So they pushed that through. And even Woodrow Wilson, after he got out of office, has, in his memoirs, said he has single-handedly ruined what his the people before him had built to create in america he had ruined america democracy is when we were signed over pretty much given uh america back to the bank of london in england and no one knows that but yeah we're owned by them pretty much the federal reserve is the the central bank of london in england originally yeah so. i mean there has been a couple coup attempts in our government since the uh since world war ii uh I think there was one when Eisenhower was in office. There was a coup attempt, and there was another one in the fifties, I believe. But uh, I think Deutsche Bank was behind the one. They were moving a bunch of money for the Nazis through the American bank systems, and apparently they had a huge hand in trying to overthrow our government. Yeah, right along with IBM and all them, they had a lot. The IBM, not so much with the throw overthrowing. They were just doing all the. Uh, they built machines for Hitler to catalog the Jews to, the, for the camps and how many like the. De- like they were building, yeah. It was we had a very good relationship with both sides of the war. Like everyone sees those posters where it's the woman rolling up her sleeves with a bandana on, and it was like we think of that as every. It was the industrial time. Everyone had to go to work for this war. We weren't even. We were. We were in the war less than any other country. We came in at the very end, you know, swung our dicks around a little bit. We did lose a lot of people. We took all of Hitler's brightest fucking engineers and scientists that created missile technology that we still use today they were working on ufo technology that we're still working on today with like self uh, propulsion and and uh, gravity inertia fucking shit like it's all been declassified it's all we all know it project paperclip i believe is what it's called where they brought in all those and all yeah. that that they did those trials the hindenburg trials or whatever where they you know they they all they they fucking basically convicted a bunch of jewish uh uh, nazi uh camp lords or whatever people that were like higher up in in the nazi uh, hitler's army but not the guys that were at the very top we they're they work for us they still do and if not they're in argentina we allowed them to escape to argentina there's a whole community of nazi jewish uh german hit of like people in Argentina, they they have like memorabilia of Nazis and all yeah. that kinds of shit. Have you seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh, dude. Uh, there's well, I've a, seen it, but I haven't seen it related to this. There's a great episode where they find out that uh, Dean and Dennis's grandfather is a Nazi. It's like one of the first episodes too. Uh, okay. They went balls to the wall that first season. They they are again, but. That first season of that show was wild yeah, by my, today's standards. My old lady watches it sometimes. She really likes some of the, that, that kind of, I don't know. She likes like The Office. I'm not a fan of that kind of comedy. It's kind of uh, that uncomfortable, you know, like, what is it? Awkward comedy. It's comedy yeah, for cringe. sure. People love it, but uh, I'm just not into it. I like shock and, and um, I like a good intelligent like intelligent joke that you sit there and think of and be like how the fuck did he think of that <laughs> like yeah well that's my thing always sunny um they have a lot of really uncomfortable scenes but it's to speak to like a social issue where it's like look at how terrible these people are isn't this really uncomfy but god damn is it funny i think a really good cringe show that they made is uh nathan for you nathan fielder's show he uh He'll like set up like be like a, a fake uh, restaurant saver or something like that, and he'll just make the worst plan possible. And no one, he's the only one in on the joke. He is the cringiest person at playing that character. Uh-huh. Uh, it is a great show, and the amount of effort and lawyers that go into doing it, it's insane. Dude, you, know, you probably don't remember this. It was because when I, it was out when I was a kid, but Jamie. Kennedy, do you know who that is? No. He did uh, Malibu's Most Wanted. 
He was B. Radley from Malibu. <laughs> if you want a good movie to sit and watch, look up Malibu's Most Wanted. Okay. You got to. It's got B. Rad. <laughs> B. Yeah. B. Rad. And it's Jamie Kennedy, but he had this TV show, and him and a couple other guys would go to different comedians' uh, sets and heckle them in the crowd, be heckling, like professional heckling. And <laughs> it was the funniest shit. They would get, people would get mad. It was like the Jamie Kennedy experiment or something like that. It was, it was a, it didn't last long, but it was good. Jamie Kennedy did some good shit. He just called a bad rap. I don't know why. He had some, I, I've always thought he was pretty funny. I'm going to Google him and he's going to have touched a child or something. I already know it. I don't think he's ever gotten any to that. But uh, Malibu Most Wanted is is the, that was, uh, I might watch that tonight. <laughs> like, I just went through and watched a bunch of like really good, like uh, classic John Carpenter movies this last week. That dude's a really good fucking director. John Carpenter, huh? Yeah, Halloween, The Thing. He did all those yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I grew up on those as a kid. Like Halloween. Like I said, my dad collected movies, and Mike Myers was hit. Well, what's her name? Uh, the sister. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis was his. Was both. Even my gay father loves some Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> he would tear that up. So he ain't too gay. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Uh, John Carpenter, yeah, he's yeah, he's he's gonna go down as one of the greats. Uh, I think. You know, the, one of the probably the best shows that's just back on Netflix that's like really called out a lot of shit. The Chappelle Show. Dude, great show. Yeah, great. like the 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 me and my buddies. Well, I was in middle school and high school, and that was going Aaron and dude, that Rick James. That print shit. Me and my boy Tonio used to fuck that. Print. Shoot the J. <laughs> Blouses win. <laughs> I uh, I watched that show when I was like twelve and thirteen. Was the first time I watched the Pell show, and I tried to show my friends clips, and they were like weren't having it. And then uh, it hit Netflix, and then they were just like, "Dude, have you ever seen the the Chappelle show?" And I'm just like, "Yeah, yeah. no, I I've been telling you about this show for ten years now." Yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of the greats. One of the ones I really uh liked growing up and always had on tv if it wasn't a movie playing was uh martin martin lawrence um the show his martin and it had uh who was it i think shanene was in it and then you had the jamie fox show i don't think any movie but i wish all these guys would go back and do a fucking comedy set they need to do a special like, what do you get to Hollywood and can't fucking write an hour no more? To get too lazy? Yeah. No, I think that's what happens. I I hope I don't ever get to there because I I like comedy. I don't like I I can't imagine liking acting more than doing a like having a set. Yeah, but how much do you like a Ferrari? That's the real question. I mean, YouTube, hook it up. <laughs> Joe Rogan, they bought Joe Rogan probably a Ferrari. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I really, I mean, that's a, like a long shot to even be like, oh, fuck, when I'm as famous as Eddie Murphy, I'll... Uh, yeah, no, just if you were in the, I would hate to ever, if I got to that point, would I want to give up comedy? Because the comedy thing is more of a, that's more, I guess it's more of a thing for me because you know, I have, a, I guess, a job and a career that I could stick with and, and retire off of, but comedy is something i get to do because i want to not like as i keep telling a lot of comedians like get a skill money will help you like it will open up a lot more doors in comedy just if you've got a skill and you're making good money a, a day job like me i'm up at four i'm on the job site six six thirty i'm off at two maybe i'll maybe go take a nap and then go to an open mic or to the shows and shit get a couple more hours of sleep and then really power nap through the weekend but it's it's possible but I, I i can buy my way into places if i really want to and you're just able to do so much more able to get to so many more places yeah man you're you were comfortable when you started comedy i started when i was a fucking child like i i had to grow up to do comedy so like i don't know what yeah you going definitely on, did dude. a lot better than uh some um uh the the, the younger guys because you're you're 
you're surrounding yourself with the right people though like hanging out with kuvar a lot using you know bouncing stuff off of him he's great like i i love getting like messages from him when he's talking to me about a joke or something because he's he does he, he is good at that fucking that that, that technique he uses of writing because he hits you with a shit ton <laughs> like try this 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 yeah, I uh, I was like, hey, bro, I, I got this premise right now. I'm I'm I can't crack it. He sent me fucking like six tags yeah. in a minute, and I was like, okay, Jesus, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could tag it six times at the show, but I'll start with these three. <laughs> yeah, man, but uh, no, I'm like that's why I like college because I'm I can like expand my worldview on stuff, and I can like d- I'm developing critical thinking skills, which is really nice, and I've really opened up myself into like arts that I've never appreciated before, like. I'm into fucking like uh, classic lit now. They, I'm in a classic lit class. I'm terrible at it. I just picked up not not literature, but grammar. I, I not picked it up as in like a class, but really gone back because I, I I feel it's good to always go back and really really know your basics and always remember them and, and have them mastered. Like master your basics and then comedy. That's just the jokes. Jokes is what you need to master. And the basics of jokes is knowing your eight basic structures of jokes, how many, what kind of joke, misdirection, you know, incongruency, all those different kinds of jokes that are out there. But there's really only eight. And once you know those eight, I learn, you know, I learn those, what those eight are. But then you got to be like, all right, well, most of the time, this kind of one, one out of these eight jokes, they're written like this and this structure and this sentence and they're, this kind of sentence and then i'm like oh well how do you make that kind of sense and i gotta go back to grammar and learn the sentence structure all over but it's really helped just with writing because uh in a way it, it just it just helps it be more fluent you're 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 going through even the basics i feel if, if you know what you're doing in the big like the basics are solid your foundation solid you, you can build off of that but I don't know. I write where I write as I talk. I've noticed a lot of comedians don't do that. They write differently than what they talk. I just say what I'm thinking and how I would say it on stage, and I write that exact way. Yeah. A lot of writers don't do that. I don't get that. I'm not to the level of uh, comfortability and fluidness on stage that I'd like to be, but uh, I'm definitely uh, I'm going up to stage not being as rehearsed anymore, and it's helping me out a lot. Oh, yeah, that Mason City show, I haven't I didn't seen you perform in few months and you definitely just those few months came a, a long way yeah you're not you're not sticking just to your you're not regurgitating your set you're actually being aware of your surroundings now and i think we all a lot of us are and that's what i mean when we some of these comedians are going to come back and you're going to think that they were like you know and, and everybody else is and they're going to go up there and it's not going to be good and they're going to wonder why the fuck andrew gaffigan's getting the, the time slots and the you know I mean, that's that's the hope of what happens, but maybe everything readjusts or I don't know. But I mean, like Chris here put that Facebook post up and he's like, shit is going to be hectic in July. Like you guys are not going to know what fucking hit yeah. over this time. So, yeah, I think there is some uh, validity to that. Yeah, I, I'm not. I guess I don't know. I'm just not with the right people or I don't know. I just don't. I haven't been booked for. No, I did. I got booked. I'm, I'm on a show. I think in a week or so, Nate's got me on one. But I'm seeing a lot of shows going on just left and right every day. I can't go on Facebook without six different shows being, you know, especially with, like, Jason Nelson now that he's rolling and doing shows, uh, Tenario's doing shows. Nicole is her, uh, she, Nic- she's doing her first production. Yeah, Nicole and Cody Bear and his old lady. Um, they've been doing shows. Yeah, I thought about it, but there's just too many and uh i can't get a hold of the right people i want to get a hold of i want a big name (laughs) like if i'm gonna get into doing a show i'm gonna that's one thing i mean by money i can spend the money if i can if if i can pay for the comedian up front i can charge what i want if the name's good enough if i can pull a greg warren or a nikki glazier while she's in town or something for a night for a fucking grand i can go ahead and take a fucking hundred capacity room and charge thirty dollars that's three grand. Dude, uh, you can rent out uh, KC Hall's VFWs. Just rent those bitches out. Put on the shows there. 
Yeah, no, I got a little bit of a nicer place already that I used to work at. It's out in uh, Wildwood, Chesterfield area called Sky Music Lounge. Okay. Real nice fucking classy venue for like jazz and blues and stuff. They got a nice stage. And the great thing is they got a main bar, but they got another bar that's in the back. So it doesn't, you don't have to have the bar right there while you're performing and everything in the rooms. Perfect. It's it's perfect for comedy. It's an 85 uh, capacity. You got a marquee board for your name to go on. Got green room for the comedians and shit. So. Uh, I I know uh, what me uh, Jason for sure has been doing. Nicole on these shows that they're producing, they're getting the big STL names. That's who's headlining. Like I have Precious J headlining my first show that I'm producing. Nice, Precious is a good one. Yeah, I'm super pumped that she uh, said okay to doing it. So I think it's there's great comics in the city, oh, uh, yeah, definitely. and I think those are the good ones to get for your shows. Yeah, no, that that's. That and I've reached out to the one, uh, both of the Tory brothers. I don't know if you're familiar with Guy or Joe Tory, but they're like back in Cedric the Entertainer's kind of day. They were big St. Louis comedians and everything. Joe the Animal actually reminded me of him because we were sitting here talking about how he uh, did what used to go to open mics with Cedric and shit. Was that the same open mics as Cedric the Entertainer, Nikki Glazier? Yeah, all those. So I was like, what about Joe and Guy Tory? I know they were from Missouri and St. Louis. And I went on their Facebook and they were posting shit about St. Louis. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to reach out to them and see what's up with them. They'll come on the podcast. And then if they can get them on the podcast, I'll get them to do a show. I'll call them fucking. I got. I know the owner of the venue. I'll be like, let me get a weekend. <laughs> yeah, that no, that would be a good He's going to charge me 300 and uh for the room and that comes with the, the two bartenders a waitress sound guy and uh a door basically man that does like takes the tickets and stuff so that's pretty i'll probably have to pay someone to do the door for me but uh yeah i'm getting like the bar service i'm i'll sell all the tickets so where is it gonna be it is at the looking glass lounge in new memphis illinois oh okay yeah yeah who is here that was uh zach Bukovich. yeah he's gonna be on it too Right on, right on. Uh, what? Where is this New Mexico? <laughs> I mean, New Memphis. All right, so it is. Uh, it is a very small town. I decided to go local and small for my first show that I'm producing. It is. Um, uh, it's take sixty four. Uh, about thirty minutes east out of the city. Uh, you'll hit a small town. In uh, Illinois. In Illinois, yeah, and then you'll want to go through that small town, drive to an even smaller town. That's oh. where this place is. So. Uh, I like the name though, the Looking Glass. It rolls off the tongue. It's a cool uh, yeah. pool lounge cool. bar. Like it's like some like I fucking thought I was gonna get stabbed with the pool cue when I was in there. So <laughs> it was pretty cool spot. Yeah, that's another, my other big holdup is a uh, I've got a show that was all prepared. Everything's ready to go at the back. Uh, the, Bobby's place in Valley Park. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but they got a really nice stage and a really nice place, and usually have a lot of people that show up, but. Uh, COVID shut all that shit down, and now I've kind of just, uh, I'm in talks, I got a place that's a thousand capacity, so unless I'm landing Nikki Glazer for sure for a weekend, it's not worth it. Yeah. The Opera House or something like that, I've reached out to, and they've reached back, I haven't responded to them yet. I mean, there's a lot of stages. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've probably emailed 20 or 30 the other night, because I really got a itch, and I was like, I need to put a show on, and I was like... After I emailed him on, I was like, I probably don't need to put a show on. <laughs> I was like, I got enough going on with this work and my own comedy thing. Because I'm going to want to prepare a, probably a end of the summer. Going to see if John wants to really. Because he ended, was talking to me the other night after the show. Uh, going and doing, uh, hitting the road and doing some shit. Like booking a couple things for a week. And, and then hitting them on the way to somewhere and, and, and doing a gig. I was like, yeah, we should do something like that. Go up to Texas. I'd really like to check that out. Uh, I'm going to take a bathroom break really quick. Uh, I'll be right back. i got something to say uh, about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do your thing. Where's, uh, where's your bathroom at? Oh, it's right there. Okay. Yeah, now i got something to say about that. Bro, so. You want to fucking make it loud for you? Uh, <laughs> you getting in the competition with Ronaldo and Mike Radcliffe? Oh, they got the pistol at <laughs> Yeah.
Hungry as a motherfucker. <coughs> oh, this one. I think that's a record. Well, you're in the competition now. Uh. Woo! God damn, bro. <laughs> I have been sitting too long. I've got so many different options. My little hammock chair, my overly priced, expensive couch that I had to have. It's all <laughs> electronic with recliners and shit. <laughs> so you said that you were looking, you and John were going to like book stuff. I thought I heard you on a previous podcast say that's not a good decision. What? To uh, book road stuff independently. I mean, uh, he's the one that was talking about booking. If he's got a guy, that, if he's got a way to get in it, I'm down. And I can reach out to some people in Virginia if we went that way. But I really want to go to Texas and stuff. Um, and if they're gonna, I don't have a, I don't have a video, and I don't really see getting a booker out here. I don't know if there's really any, many bookers in Missouri that you can get that be like take you on as a you know yeah i don't know about that either so i think you'd have to put in the effort to get out there to those places where they're gonna be like la used to be one of them new york was one of them but new york is horrible right now and la is horrible right now both of them are just tent city and shit everywhere literal yeah i wouldn't move to la probably i would uh I keep my options open. I don't know what's going on. I still have three more years of college to get through before I can even look at being like, okay, what? What's the city? Yeah, do it. Do it young though, man. I I, I did luck out and I, I've done some traveling. Lived in a couple of different places, and uh, it's been nice. I I'm not settled down yet though. I'm not gonna stay here forever. That's for sure. Eventually, if I can get my wife to sell this house, she's in love with this house. So, I mean, dude, you are out here. That is wild. Yeah, it's about 30, 40 minutes away from everything. <laughs> Any, well, I get to I get to the Word Up, uh, Funny Bone, Helium, and all about 35, 40 minutes. And I can get to St. Charles right there, the back door, in about 50 minutes. So Okay, that's about how far everything is for me, too. I mean, it's nice. You are far enough away where you would be safe in an apocalypse, but close enough to the city to get resources. Oh, yeah. I'm only like 15 minutes from Arnold with Walmart and all that shit. John Matty lives right down that, down that road by there. I'm pretty close to everything. It's just, just enough to where I don't get high-speed internet. <laughs> <laughs> I could not live without that. I, I've not been able to play Call of Duty uh, since my roommates moved back in. They're chewing up all the Wi-Fi now, so I can't play COD online. Uh, yeah, no, see, I went and bought me one of those uh, little, it's like an RV, RV Wi-Fi hotspot, and I put 50 gigabytes or whatever memory on it each month. So I've got that for the hotspot to run, and then we both have our phone plans, which each have 50 uh, gigabytes of uh, data each month on the hotspot. So we just run those because it's better. We had the satellite and we finally were like, just come get this piece of shit off my roof. Shit sucks. I go unlimited data. I am on data all the time. Yeah, but when it, the, 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 uh, I couldn't find a hotspot unlimited plan with our uh, contracts no people don't do it anymore because people were like running like their xboxes and their computer like they would like buy a separate phone to just explode with the data yeah no that's what i was doing <laughs> i have uh we i got this i don't know i had two older iphones actually i got this one down here i got the ipad that i can do i could have hooked up but 
That the newer iPhones, we both got those and they do really well. Um, we bought those because, well, I had needed a new phone because my old lady washed through my phone in the washing machine after we were having sex. <laughs> we like, you know, sporadic did it, you know, dropped her clothes. She was being all nice, picked them all up afterwards. <laughs> Put them right in the wash? Yeah, just it was, you know, she was doing laundry. And when we do laundry, we do it all. And it never ends. Dude, I'm always doing laundry. Every There's a fucking piece of clothing that needs washed every single day. Yeah, when I was your age, I only had a couple of pair of board shorts and flannels. And that was, like, and a cup, like, some Sanooks. And I was like, I, you caught me rocking those all the time. And I would just jump in the ocean to wash them <laughs> pretty much. I'm trying to uh, get my wardrobe bigger right now. Uh, clothes are too expensive for no reason. I get all my like button ups that I, cause I like getting the real, uh, hippie long kind of Jimi Hendrix style button ups when I can find them. We go to the thrift store every weekend. Sometimes we used to, and I'd look at all the records and try to find good like record, you know, like those up there. A couple comedy records I found a f- couple months ago. You got any uh, Beatles vinyls? Uh, no, I haven't found any of those yet. I've got a lot of the new bands. I've got all the Dirty Heads as vinyl. <laughs> kind of like, uh, we got a lot of vinyl, actually. We've been collecting now for a few years. Uh, a lot of special editions, like, I got a Pepper one that's, like, purple and white. And my Dirty Heads one is completely clear orange. But that discrepancy one there is a completely, like, it's like a cream green one that's... Yeah, so I got to build a display for all my cool, like, I've got slightly stupid uh, foil uh, vinyl album cover with the vinyl and everything, but it's made to be displayed, the artwork. But I'm going to build a, like, a bunch of squares of where each one to fit in and fit you, you know. Yeah, do something cool with that. I, vinyls are, again, that's a very expensive hobby to get into, so... Uh, that's why we do the thrift store. You'll find some gold. Like I found a, I found a, a few nice, um, couple of, like old school Greg Almonds, uh, and the Almond Brothers. And then I found those comedy albums right there. That Hudson and Landry one is really good. Um, and vinyl, it's just like a CD, pretty much. I guess yeah. But when you got Spotify, I mean nothing's better. Yeah. Well. That hard vinyl copy. Vinyl sales are up. They beat uh, CD sales this past year. Yeah, who fucks with a CD? But, like, I'm not going to bring a vinyl player into my car. No. Like. No, it's definitely a a hobbyist kind of thing. A collector kind of thing. I just, I wish I could get one of these vinyls. One of the original vinyls of the Cheech and Chong uh, records. Especially with the original sheet in it. You used to get, that's what they did, is they made comedy records. And they both played music, and they made comedy uh, vinyls and uh, before their movies. And when you would get their record, it, it would open up, and there was a little pocket with a paper that was like... So, like in the movie, there's this big fucking joint that they have in the movie, and you can roll it up because the, the paper's got a little pocket in it for you to fit like an ounce and a half, and you can just roll this huge joint up and everything. That's badass. Yeah, and it's the size of the vinyl page. It's the whole vinyl page, so it's huge. And it's really fucking, it, it's worth a lot of money when you if you can find one of those. Fuck yeah, dude. But, so, what are your socials? Let's get you tagged. All right, I am on Twitter. I'm at Andrew Gaffigan. Instagram, Andrew.Gaffigan. Facebook, I am Andrew Gaffigan. Uh, I am on OnlyFans as o- Andrew Gaffigan. Uh, I, bu- I am on... Um, what is... Uh, fuck, what's my last social? I'm on Clubhouse as well. What if we all the and I'm on, started uh, uh, OnlyFans and just took over OnlyFans with jokes? Dude, <laughs> Just shit to we that should be a fucking thing. I was gonna drop my social for what's that fucking right wing social media app? Parlor? Parlor. God damn it. If I could remember I was like, I'm on Parlor at Andrew Gaffigan. Uh did you get a parlor? No, I never uh, even I, tra- I saw screenshots and that was enough. Yeah, I didn't. I, didn't. I seen that they were revamping MySpace. They've been saying that shit. I'm <laughs> no. 
or somebody that did it or somebody like remade it basically with their own website and it's just like MySpace. It's the old school MySpace when it first came out before Facebook. <laughs> Dude, we need less social media. I agree. We... I don't use like Twitter. I don't like Twitter. I think Twitter is just a bunch of people that shouldn't have opinions stating their opinions. <laughs> Yeah, no, Twitter should be for dick jokes and seeing boobs. Yeah, like that, that's, I understand comedians that use it for that and they have a big following so they can really test stuff. But uh, a lot of these other people that aren't comedians and they have a big following of just like hating and, and canceling people, it's like, this is kind of ridiculous. I don't ever use it. I don't think I have any followers. I don't barely use anything besides YouTube and Facebook. I fuck with Instagram a little bit, but so hard to get all this shit uploaded to one and, and they should just make it all all this one at a time boom i should be able to upload it to youtube and it goes to instagram and facebook and spotify and anchor and all the other bullshit yeah i mean just wait for google to buy everything and then that'll be a possibility for you google supposedly has a new competitor they might have an up-and-coming competitor somebody that's uh they haven't had nobody in the com- competition in a long time. What is it, Parlor? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. I was heard, listening to something uh, on the way, actually, but before, right before I met you, I was listening to the, uh, I think it was the new one of the new Rogan clips, and they were talking about maybe that, maybe it was them, or maybe a news article. I don't know. But right on. Uh, right. We're going to have to get you to come on here with, uh, if you don't win again. <laughs> The winner, and you're going to come on. That'd be fun. And then y'all roast each other here. Okay, that sounds but really fun. Who's all signed up? I have absolutely no idea. I'm not even signed up yet. I need to go do that. Yeah, yeah. What about Kuvi? Is he? Uh, I don't know. I haven't spoken to him about it. Yeah, I'm not signing up. I Hopefully, he'll make me the uh, host, but I doubt it. I told him that's what I wanted to do from the beginning. When I first came up with the idea, I was like, I don't want to do the competition. I just want to host it. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. <laughs> it, I only brought the idea up to him is because it was with the COVID had just started and he was hurting. And he was like, I was like, well, we should do this. This would break some money. And it did. Oh, uh, fuck yeah, dude. We we can't even say how many people showed up. Like, yeah. it was great. I went out and smoked a cigarette real quick. And I remember never hearing the back door that loud with laughter before just doors closed just but and that's all you heard it was good especially that fucking quentin and um jason's rose Jason. oh yeah. fuck i fell on the floor yeah literally out of my chair yeah because quentin had just told me the whole backstory of everything before yeah. that dude that was that room was electric all night i loved it so what is that one do you know when that one is up the backdoor uh, roast, the next one? Uh, it is April 16th and 17th. 16th and 17th. This will be out by then, for sure. It just a high-speed internet takes me a while to upload. It's going to be a couple of days. <laughs> Editing, I can knock out in like an hour, but the uploading takes like 48 hours. Uh, what else you got? Game, uh, you got the New Memphis. What date is that? Uh, that is April 22nd. April 22nd. What else are you on? Uh, let's see. The rest of my March is clear. Uh, I'm looking at booking something. I can't. I, I don't want to say anything yet because it's not official, but I'm looking at having another uh, weekend in April. Oh, hell yeah. So, but nothing's been like uh, talked about yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's uh, you got Purdy B coming to your first one. Not Purdy B. Uh, Precious J. Precious J. I want to get Purdy B on here too. And Precious J. But she's so busy all the time. She really is. You got you lucked out with that one. <laughs> yeah, I was shocked because I uh, I'd messaged her and then I got on Facebook and she was playing a funny bone in Ohio and I was like, she's not gonna do my bar show, yeah, and then she said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, well, how much time are you giving her? Uh, she's doing twenty five to thirty. Well, yeah, yeah. She wants that's that's where she's at now. Trying to build, you know, she's trying to expand out of those guest feature fifteen minute spots and. I would. We'll see. I don't know. You just got to keep bar shows short, and I already have six comics on it. So I would say keeping her around 30 would, yeah. for the good of the show. Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to do Bobby's place. And I was, people get, uh, you're, you know, ready to move and, and about tired of a comedy show, right? About 90 minutes is from everything that I've researched and read. It's 
right there at the hour and a half, you, you know, your 90 minutes is, is a perfect golden number to kind of be wrapping everything up. Unless the headliner's killing it. If the headliner's killing it or everybody's killing it and it just runs over because of that, that's always good because they're buying drinks because they're happy and laughing and everyone, you know. You, yeah, it, we'll see how it goes. I mean, Clinton County uh, very much wants comedy. Judged off every show I've done there. They love nice. comedy there. Yeah, what else do they have? <laughs> Fucking hitting their wives. Oh, well, <laughs> so, you know, no, I'm getting drinking. <laughs> drinking. Truck Cheech. pulls. I'm sure there's a good truck pull annually. Oh, no, they do that. Yeah. Truck pull, riding four-wheelers, shooting guns, uh, yeah. fist fights. That's a big one there. Yeah, all that stuff's big out here from what I hear. But um, not in here because <laughs> this place is for getting fucked up. <laughs> on god <laughs> <laughs> this place is for meeting god <laughs> but right on man i appreciate you coming on i know you're probably hungry because you're a grown boy and it's been what fucking three hours i think we're at three uh yeah, i'm oh, going yeah. to chipotle after this yeah so. it's not that i don't think it's that far Nah, i'll hit the one up by my house oh right on, right on. where are you at edwardsville oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's right right on. right on right on well appreciate it later everybody 